Welcome, everybody, to live coverage of the President's Athletic Conference Women's Lacrosse Championships on the PAC Sports Network. Today from Westminster College in New Wilmington, Pennsylvania. It is the Westminster Titans, the number one seed in this tournament, taking on the Washington and Jefferson Presidents. They are the second seed in the Women's Lacrosse Tournament. With Kevin Zomanski, I'm Bob Workwis. Glad to bring you coverage and glad you're aboard coverage of this uh, lacrosse championship uh, on this Saturday evening. Interesting uh, dynamics, Kevin, between the two schools. Westminster College is really still in its women's lacrosse program in its infancy where the WNJ presidents, they've been here and been in this title game before four straight years, actually. This is their fifth straight appearance. Yeah, the women's program here at Westminster College is only in its third year of existence. <clears throat> Currently on a school record nine-game winning streak, um, but they're and that's the reason why they're going to host this game today. They have an overall record of thirteen to two, seven and zero in the conference, seven to two record here at Burry Stadium on their home campus. Uh, WJ comes into the game, so I find my standings here. Uh, they have a record of nine and seven overall, six and one in the conference. They finished second. In the standings, they both obviously won the semifinal games, which is the reason why we're here tonight for this uh, championship game of the President's Athletic Conference, the very first championship in the inaugural season for women's lacrosse in this conference. The semifinals uh, for these schools, it was Westminster defeating fourth seeded St. Vincent by a score of 18-8, to and WJ in the 2-3 matchup, they defeated Franciscan by a score of 12-7. Kim Eldridge is the head coach here at Westminster. She is in her third year. She has experience in starting a program. You guys sort of crossed paths back in yeah. uh, your past, but she was the first head coach ever at Duquesne University. Kevin. Yeah, he said she held that position from 1997 through 2005. So <clears throat> she mentioned 1996. So I was uh, coaching a hockey team down there until the 97-98 season. I was doing both Duquesne and Central. So that was my last season at Duquesne. So I think we had a couple years of overlap Uh down on the bluff downtown, and Brian Caleri was the AD at the time. We asked her about that yesterday. So, yeah, she said he hired her. She told a great story about that when she first got the job at Duquesne. Didn't have much time to recruit. She goes, what about recruiting? And Brian Caleri said, well, recruit in the cafeteria. Yeah, go to the cafeteria. So we asked her about that starting the program here three years ago, and she said she has a sign, which she still has somewhere in her office, right. where she put up, if you're interested in playing lacrosse, come see me. It's kind of worked out. They went from one win in 2017 Five wins in 2018. Uh, they finished fifth in the ORLC. And then this year, 13 wins is a program record for the Westminster Titans. On the other side, Allison Valerio is in her sixth year uh, at the helm of a w &J. Uh, They've been in the championship game. As I mentioned, this will be the fifth straight year. They were ORLC champs in 2016, 2017, 2018. Last year, they finished as the runner-up. To Transylvania in 2017, Kevin, they made the NCAA Division III tournament where they lost in the uh, first round to Catholic University. But Coach Valerio said that was exciting, and they're certainly excited tonight because uh, she said this would fit right in. WJ has a lot of good sports programs; they want to be considered amongst those. And they have the opportunity to win the inaugural championship, and I think that's the <clears throat> difference in the programs. WJ has the experience of playing in the championship games. And that was one of the things pointed out by Coach Eldridge. He was wondering how the team was going to react. Uh, they're on their home field, so that gives them a, a level of comfort in the play. But, you know, they, they don't have that pedigree of playing in past championship games and only being their third year of having lacrosse. You mentioned earlier recruiting the cafeteria. I asked her that question specifically because, you know, lacrosse is still a growing sport in this area, and she's able to attract players from other areas. I said, do you recruit athletes? And she said, absolutely. I recruit athletes, teach them to play lacrosse. And that's part of the reason for her success here at Westminster with their undefeated conference record. And they're uh, hosting the championship game here today. One other thing to factor into this, this is the second matchup of the year yes. between the Titans and the Presidents. The first one was a pretty good uh, one, an overtime victory for Westminster. Yeah, if you look at the w &J schedule, they're on a five-game winning streak. They've won seven of eight. And sprinkled in there was the conference loss on April 9th at Westminster, 7-6 to six in overtime. So I think you and I would sign up for a match like that here today. That would be rather interesting. 
Uh, we mentioned the nine-game winning streak for Westminster. So WJ seven and eight, the one loss to WJ. <clears throat> I think that proves or indicates to us that it's pretty evenly matched teams. Uh, if you look at the rosters, you might have a little bit of uh, curiosity. Westminster has a larger number of players, but Coach uh, Valario is confident. She's saying quality over quantity. And she's ready to go. She had a look of confidence on the field in the warm-ups. And, uh, that, that she has been here before. Several of our players have also uh, been at this juncture. If you look at the, the numbers as far as goal scoring, no problem at all. Right. Apparently for the Westminster Titans, Kevin averaging almost 18 or 17 goals a game, which is tops in the conference. Yeah, if you look at it right here, uh, we have 16.8. If you look at the conference games, 18.14 in uh, goals. They were first and WJ second in goals per game. So there's a good indication of why they're here. Uh, but you, you throw in some of the other ones, assist WJ second, Westminster third, points per game, Westminster's first, WJ's third. So when you start adding up the different categories and you're in the top three in each of those categories, that tells you the quality of the teams here today. Coach Valerio uh, indicated to us, too, that both of these teams, and we're going to talk about uh, a couple of the focal points on offense, Margo Mason being one, the junior for Westminster, and Ray La Rochelle, the junior for W&J. Their numbers are phenomenal, which we'll get to here in a second. So she thinks that because those two are at the forefront of some of the offensive talents, it might be players on the defensive end and maybe even in the goal right. that can uh, change the complex of this game, the complexion. Yeah, the conversation we were having is when you have outstanding attack players in any sport, you have leading scores where they're going to get theirs and maybe they cancel out each other, but then what happens is you have the secondary scoring, the uh, <clears throat> not so much the, the supporting cast that raise, rises to the occasion, raises their level of play and uh, often is the difference maker in championship games. So you could see that in terms of uh, points accrued, or you could see that with defenders or um, goalkeepers. And in this in this instance, we have two freshman goalkeepers starting here today. You have uh, Emma Bradley from South Fayette High School, the freshman goalkeeper for the Titans of Westminster College, and Sam Lefensty, the goalkeeper from Frederick, Maryland, uh, starting for the Presidents uh, here today. So that's that's kind of interesting. You have two. Experience, uh, two inexperienced goaltenders starting in the cage here today. Um, one of the other factors, maybe in Westminster's column, and uh, I want to say it's a gray Saturday because it is a gray <laughs> Saturday weather-wise, but the men's lacrosse program for Westminster right. College was in the championship earlier today, this afternoon. They were at Grove City. They lost that match 14-3, to so we saw some glum faces when we were out here on campus of uh, some of the men's lacrosse players, so uh, the Lady Titans are hoping to flip the script and uh, win a title here this evening. Yeah, pulling in, trying. To, we saw the stadium trying to find the parking. We saw some guys that you could tell were lacrosse players on, on the men's team. Well, we don't know. Maybe everyone at this campus wears <laughs> the, eye black. The eye black down their face. That could be true. It could be a, a fashion thing, but to us, they thought we thought they were lacrosse players, and they didn't have a look of celebration on their faces, so we kind of deduced it. They did not come back. We had an early score there. They did not come back and win that game. So the Lady Titans looking to flip the script here tonight and bring home the first women's lacrosse championship in the President's Athletic Conference. This is uh, the first year that this has been sanctioned, these teams playing in the ORLC for the past couple of years. Uh, with that comes an automatic bid as well into the NCAA Division Three tournament. That was waived because many of these schools were in the Heartland Athletic Conference. The selections uh, for the Division Three Championship are scheduled to be announced tomorrow at 9.30. So the winner of that game will be interested uh, uh, in looking at that tomorrow morning. They are introducing the starting lineups for both the Presidents and the Titans. Kevin has those for both WJ and Westminster. So starting for the Washington and Jefferson Presidents, <clears throat> we mentioned the starting goalkeeper, the freshman, num we're number zero, Sam Lenfensty. Starting on D, number, we're number one, Caitlin White from Linthicum, wow, let me get this one, Linthicum, Maryland. Uh, we're number two, Carly Hopkins from North Allegheny High School, the junior defender. White was a junior. And we're number three is the sophomore midfielder from uh, Philadelphia, PA, Sophia. Bo Bro, try this one again, Bo Bro Nakova. You got to sound that one out phonetically. Also on the attack, freshman from the Hunt School in Princeton, New Jersey, Piper Shinsky. 
on defense, a freshman from the Ellis School wearing number nine, Lem Gamble, a junior from Seminole High School in Sanford, Florida, wearing number 12, attack midfielder Jenna Allen, number 14 from North Brantford, Connecticut, on the attack, the junior Kega uh, Bolas, uh, the freshman from Indiana High School in Indiana, PA, midfielder wearing 16, uh, Clara Sherwood, and the leading scorer for the Presidents wearing 17, the junior from East Sandwich, Massachusetts, Ray La Rochelle, uh, the senior defender from Villa Maria Academy from Erie, PA, Allison Onslow, and the midfielder from Cumberland Valley, Carlisle, PA, wearing 20, the junior, Alexis Miller. For the Titans, the homestanding Titans, we mentioned the goalkeeper, the freshman from South Fayette, wearing number two, Emma Bradley. On the attack, wearing number four from Blackhawk High School in Beaver Falls, PA, Bria Braddock. Uh, the aforementioned junior midfielder from Chartiers Valley High School, wearing number eight, Margo Mason. The senior defender from Moon Area High School in Moon Township, PA, wearing number nine, Emily D'Amico. The junior midfielder from South Park High School in South Park, PA, wearing 12, Emily Marcus. And the junior from Crestwood High School in Hiram, Ohio, wearing 13, Romy Schweikert. Uh, the junior attack from Blairsville High School in Blairsville, PA, wearing number 15, Michaela Hayes. The senior from Deer Lakes High School in Chester, PA, wearing 19, midfielder attack, Emily Irvine, wearing 20 from Norwin High School in Irwin, PA, Megan Polzinski, we're going to pause for the anthem. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. You're watching the PAC Women's Lacrosse Championship here on the PAC Sports Network. With two locations in Washington County at the McMurray Shops in Peters Township and Trinity Point in Washington. The biggest thing with Consolidated is their customer service. They treat you like a preferred client, even if you're just starting with them. They've truly taken the time to understand who we are as a business and recommend the best product and services based upon that knowledge of who we are. Being able to rely on a technology partner like CCI to provide the fiber backbone means that our internet signal is completely reliable. I can't recommend any other parties. Consolidate is my first choice. When you're seriously in debt, you know that feeling. It returns every time the phone rings. Things are out of control. A job you were counting on didn't come through or you got sick. No matter how it got to this point, your creditors don't care or understand, but I do. It's not too late. I can help. If you're embarrassed, overwhelmed or frustrated, don't be. I'm not here to judge, I'm here to help, and you do need help. Please call me, there is a way out, and I'll get you there. When you are in need of fast, affordable, and professional voiceovers, contact Time Ad Productions. Time Ad Productions offers voice services for business presentations, documentary narrations, radio, television, imaging, and commercials, movie trailers, corporate phone systems, websites, audiobooks, and more. Visit or contact us online at www.timeadproductions.com. Back at Burry Stadium, it is coverage of the PAC Women's Lacrosse Championship here at Westminster College on the PAC Sports Network. Bob work with Kevin Zomanski, uh, we need to get Finish. you the final starters for Westminster. Yeah, we had ran out of time there before the break. Uh, the freshman midfielder, wearing 22, Lexi Radinick for Westminster. <clears throat> the junior defender from Seneca Valley, wearing 23, Brooke Lysick. And finally, the sophomore from Cannon McMillan High School in Cannonsburg, PA, wearing 24, Marissa Keller. The Titans, the higher seat, so they're in their home white jerseys with the navy blue trim, the navy blue uh, skirts or skorts, if you will, kilts, I believe Coach Eldridge called them. W and J, they're familiar uh, black and red, mostly black here this uh, evening. They will be moving from right to left across your computer screen for this first half of play, two 30 minute halves. It will be Sam Lenfesti, the freshman in the goal to our right. She is a 6 and 0. Oh. She came in actually during the loss to W and J. In overtime, when Sarah Mati 
uh, got hurt, and Lenfesti has been good ever since. Emma Bradley, you talked about the freshman from South Bat, which is another high school program in this area that's in its infancy. She is in the goal to our left. Draw controls during conference play. Westminster 102 for a percentage of 14 and a half. W and J 90 for a percentage of 12.86. <clears throat> It'll be Emily D'Amico on the draw for Westminster. You can get the number yet on the uh, President's player. We'll hear in a second after they get them squared away. Draw control is always important. Both coaches talked about that being a key. And for the Presidents, it was uh, Clara Sherwood. And the faceoff and the ground ball was finally scooped up on the near side. That's a win for Emily D'Amico. And Bria Braddock will enter the attack zone for Westminster. Walks in, gets defended well. Nice job to create a turnover there by Carly Hopkin for W&J. And here come the Presidents on their first possession. Bobrovnikova works her way into the attack zone on the far side, the right wing side of the field, steps below the goal line and now set it up. She's going to walk out, tries to find a cutter, does a turning shot, and there's the first save by Bradley off the shot by Clara Sherwood. Bob Rove and the Kova ran a long way down the far side, circled the net, found the shooter right in front, but the first save of the game for Bradley. There's a <clears throat> collision and a whistle against Allison Onslow, the only senior on this W and J team. As she collided uh, just uh, really going for the same position on the field with Emily Irvine. Irvine temporarily shaken up, but she's back and okay. Something we were kind of warned you might see, WJ trying to be physical with the Titans in this match. Irvine works it into the attack zone. Puts the ball in the uh, basket of Michaela Hayes, the junior attack, on the near side against the zone defense from WJ. Although we'll switch positions, kind of patiently work it to the top of the formation with Margot Mason. Her number is phenomenal. The transfer from Penn State, 85 goals, 24 assists, 109 points on the season for Margot Mason. The defense is kind of like four across and then man the man closer to the cage. D'Amico cuts in and scores! And the Titans are on the board first. Emily D'Amico, the senior, makes it 1 0. Yeah, they're very patiently passing it out high. Then finally, D'Amico found a little seam and was able to get down right in front of the cage. D'Amico, her 45th goal of the year, gets the Presidents on the board at 132 in this uh, first half. D'Amico, the senior or the uh, junior, no, she is a senior from Moon, uh, biology major. Set the uh, record in uh, high school, the team record, and the school record last year with 51 goals, which was eclipsed this year by Margot Mason. So her 45th gives the Titans a one to nothing lead. And we get a violation on the faceoff, a procedure call that's going to give possession to W and J. By the way, in the match earlier in the year, D'Amico had two goals in the 7-6 to six overtime win against W and J. There come the presidents, Clara Sherwood on the attack. Goes to the right side to Bobrov Nikova. Or we can just put like Sergei Bobrovsky. We're going to call her bro. We're just going to call her. I'm going to call her Bob. Okay. Uh, for, for obvious personal reasons. Sophia too, Bob. But Bobrov Nikova, the sophomore, one of the focal points of the attack. Alexis Miller works in. Ray La Rochelle, she's the top scorer on this president's team with 69 goals. And there's a shot that goes high and wide. But the backup provided by Caleb Bullis for the presidents. And they will retain possession. Down to 54 seconds to go on the shot clock. 90 seconds on the shot clock. There's a centering pass open and a reset and a goal. It is Jenna Allen, the junior, wide open in front of Bradley. She ties the game at one. Get a peek. I think it was an excellent entry pass from Alexis Miller as we get the announcement. And there you have it. From goal line extended on the left side, Alexis Miller found a nice wide open um, teammate there, Jenna Allen. She caught it up high, and she was able to deposit it right behind Bradley to tie the game at one. Prime scoring position for Jenna Allen from Sanford, Florida, and Seminole High School. The, the I was going to say the freshman, the junior attack has tied the game, and Miller gets the assist at 240. So it was D'Amico for Westminster and Jenna Allen. 
220. 220, 220, whatever it takes. Another draw control. Ray La Rochelle has possession for the Presidents. Walking in from left to right, runs into a triple team and has it knocked away. And a whistle blows, which should give La Rochelle free position. And she's great at that, as you would assume, with 69 goals. 14 pre free position goals on the year. <coughs> not that this is the greatest angle. She's not at the eight. So she'll just reset the offense and flips it over to Bobrovnikova, who tries to dodge and walk in down the right side. Ooh. Does get a low shot. Hits the near post. Deflects out on the rebound to the near side where Sherwood picks up the ground ball. Sherwood being marked there by Lexi Radinik. Bobrovnikova back to Sherwood. Man to man deep from the Titans, but Brovnikova was able to beat her defender on a nice dodge there down the right alley and hit the, that left post on a, on a skip shot. Coach Eldridge, Eldridge told us, Kevin, very aggressive on their man to man defense. Well, they'll chase, they'll chase, and they'll double team. Here's an opening for La Rochelle. She comes left, and a whistle before the shot, and a hold is called. And I think we're getting another free position for La Rochelle, this time at the eight, it looks like. She's going to tie her shoe before she gets that. And La Rochelle scored a goal and two assists in the win in overtime. Straight on position. She's going to waltz in. We runs into. And we get another penalty. The defense kind of collapsed. But four white jerseys yeah, collapsed on La Rochelle. Free position right down the middle there. Coach Eldred said uh, <clears throat> she plays an unorthodox man defense with double team pressure. And she will take risks. La Rochelle will walk and fire this time. Bradley makes her second save and can't control the rebound. So she denies La Rochelle in the free position. Presidents are knocked down as they got the rebound. Bobrov Nikova, the sophomore, is knocked out. She'll get the free position from the angle from the right wing side. She has a man, Braddock, in front of her, so can't get the clear shooting angle. There's the double team. Yeah, Keller came over on the double team. So they work it out, top of the formation, and coming to the near side is Bullis. Caleb Bullis flips it back to Bobrovnikova. She attacks on the right wing. Braddock forces her below the goal line. She will dump it there to Alexis Miller, who has an assist. That time they gave Bobrovnikova a little more space. Ball is knocked down. Who's going <clears> to <throat> fight for the ground ball? Comes into the crease, and it's Emma Bradley getting possession back for the Titans. Oh, oh a bad it clear. It. And it's a steal and a turn, and they miss. It's La Rochelle, who you do not want it's, to have a turnover at any place on the field, right. let alone right there, and she missed the near post. Of any player for the Presidents, you wouldn't want to give La Rochelle the turnover right in front of the goalkeeper. Unexpectedly missed a, a close-in shot, undefended between her and Bradley. Ended up rolling over here to the near side of the field and a restart for the Titans. And that sound you heard was an audible sigh, not only from Emma Bradley, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Coach Eldridge Coach all Eldridge the way and, on the far her, side. Her staff, too. And the bench over there, assistant is Grayson Blythe. The intern, intern assistant for W&J for Coach Valerio is Bridget Lawless. We get a whistle in a free position for Bria Braddock, the junior attack. She went to Blackhawk High School in Beaver Falls. She's a Beaver Falls native. She set career highs this year. And their scoring numbers. She flips it over near side to D'Amico has the only goal for the Titans. D'Amico trying to work in, can't penetrate the top of the zone, but finds a cutter. A turning shot over top the net. Bria Braddock kind of got inside the eight and fired it over top the cage. Rebound for the Titans. I believe that is Hayes trying to walk out, can't do it. I don't see many touches for Mason. We get a touch there. Just speaking of Margot Mason, and she puts the Titans on in front, two to one. Well, the president's defense did a nice job sliding on a step-out shot on the left side of the goaltender. No, it was D'Amico, sorry. No, I confused eight and nine, so it's two for D'Amico. Bria Braddock gets the assist on the D'Amico goal. They kind of found a seam on two of those shots, Kevin, in that possession inside the zone defense. Yeah, they, like I was saying there, they did a good job sliding on the <clears throat> step out on the left side of the goalkeeper. Then he kind of reset, came out the other side. D'Amico made a nice cut, and it was a nice uh, nice feed from behind the net from Bria, um, Bria Braddock on a little short area pass. 
and she deposited up high to beat the goaltender Sam Lenfensty uh, for the second goal of the game for Westminster. And she has both of them for 2-1 to one at the 529 mark. Cortland Dowds has checked in for the Titans, the junior defender, also from Blackhawk High School in, in Darlington, Pennsylvania, checks into the lineup for the Titans, who lead 2-1. to one. The goal for second of the game for D'Amico at 529. Make a procedure call. Possession to the Titans procedure called against the Presidents. Trying to walk in was Brooke Lysak, and she lost it. And that's a turnover. And coming the opposite way, this is a chance. Both coaches told us the redefending, which yeah. we see there, creates good. a turnover, gets possession back for the Titans. Yeah, it was a good ride there by the Titans. Irvine, <clears throat> walking from right to left, has the ball knocked away. Good defense there by Hopkins. But possession still with Bria Braddock and the Titans. Braddock is an interesting story. She put up great numbers, and she is banged up. She couldn't play in the fall year. She's got some injuries, which are going to require surgery after this season. Yeah, and she Coach said, Eldridge and the Titans. And Bria Braddock hoped that's for several weeks, right? Right. She said that as soon as, not long after the season ends that uh, she's going to get the required surgery. There was Mason on the attack on the left side. She is fouled. She's going to get a free position. Margot Mason, 85 goals on the year. She's from Short Tears Valley High School. Free position angle from left to right. She'll fire from distance, and there's a save. First of the game for Sam Lenfesti as she went up high with the basket. Yeah, the basket was on a right-handed up, up high, and she shot it there. I'm surprised she didn't try the other corner. Here comes Bobrovnikova on the attack. Good defense before she can even get into the the offensive zone, and Emily D'Amico comes up with the ground ball, and here comes the counter for the Titans. D'Amico's just going to walk in and come right. Takes a check there by Hopkins, and that's going to be a whistle. That's going to give Emily D'Amico a free position. She's about 13 yards out, a little bit to the right, so really not a great angle to shoot for D'Amico. Yeah, she's at the 12-meter line on on the football left hash mark. She just dumps it down to Braddock. Braddock below the goal line to Hayes. There's the cut. Hayes, there's the cut. And there's a goal. And then it's a hat trick for Emily D'Amico off the pass from Hayes. It's Westminster 3-1. to one, And it's Emily D'Amico with all three goals for the Titans. Well, she didn't go for the direct shot. As you mentioned, they passed it on the wing and dumped it down. To uh, <clears throat> Michaela Hayes, and Michaela found a cutting Emily D'Amico who picks up the hat trick. It was a well executed set play for the Titans. So, Emily D'Amico, who was uh, the key last year, the Moon High School graduate, the senior here, she has all three goals, 47 now on the year. So, Mason is maybe being the focal point of the defensive pressure. D'Amico has picked up the slack and has Westminster leading by two here in the first quarter time of her goal, her third goal, her hat trick goal at 7.20. For D'Amico, by the way, she has a hat trick now in two straight playoff games. She scored a hat trick and added two assists in the win over St. Vincent. I think that's goals 45, 46, and 47. You are correct. There's Bobrovnikova trying to dodge left, and she comes in, takes a slash, and we do get a penalty. And that's going to give Bobrovnikova a free position opportunity at the eight from the right-to-left angle. The sophomore, Bobrovnikova, from Northeast High School in Philadelphia. Let's see what Bob can do with this opportunity. She's going to run in, get close. We get a whistle before the shot. And another foul against the... Titans, and so we'll get a redo from the same angle. Actually, a step closer towards the middle of the field now for Bobrov Nikova. Two players to our right, one to the left. That was a false start on Westminster. As the player to the near side, I think it was Margot Mason who stepped oh. in. So now that's going to 
clear things out. They're going to clear Mason away. So much more room now for Bobrovnikova. We have a battle going on to the right of the keeper. Uh, one of the players fell down as they were trying to get in position. And another whistle. And another opportunity in the free position. So it's deja vu <laughs> all over again, again, and again. Instead of take two, it's take three now. Well, Bob Rove the coast probably thinking, okay, what did I want to do in the first one? Now the second one. Now the third one. Moves the angle over a little bit more to the right this time. But again, she has more room as they reshuffle the Miller players. this time with it. And that's Miller, yeah, to the near side. It's got room so to just go sidewinder here and just take a shot. Yeah, take a step and fire. Alexis Miller could do that. She's going to pass it in front. Ooh. And the Kim's in and out of the basket. And the <laughs> President's player was knocked down, kind of took a shot to the face. It was Jenna Allen who has the goal for the Presidents. And they get another whistle as we've kind of had play stopped up here on uh, this will be enough, what, five consecutive fouls against Westminster. That was a good dish inside from Allen, or Miller near side, to Allen, who is really tight. That's where we had one of the goals scored earlier. So this actually moves the free position out. So now we're going to get a chance to reset and set the offense with Bob Rovnikova. Dodges to the left, and she gets hacked on the way in by D'Amico. So this is kind of... This is, a quagmire. Yeah, this this, this possession has really uh, halted the flow of this match. Good call. No flow at all. A lot of free positions, though, for the presidents. Unable to take advantage of any of them so far. It's Bobrovnikova once again. Uh, she's going to try to force her way in. Got the shot off. It was forced wide on a block. Trying to get the ball was Marissa Keller, but she couldn't quite get there. So the presidents will retain possession. With all this going on, the shot clock has... Mm. Wound down to 20 seconds. Stops, of course, for those free positions. Now they're going to walk out. W and J. There's an opening. Turning shot to goal. It is Ray La Rochelle with her 70th, 70th goal of the season on the walkout from the near side, and it's a 3-2 game. Well, as we mentioned, there wasn't much happening except for all the restarts, but that time Ray La Rochelle got the uh, got possession of the ball behind the cage. Uh, <clears throat> kind of where the X is, and she kind of took a circuitous route around. She ran from behind the cage to the uh, right of the goalkeeper, through the middle, and deposited into the net right in front of Emma Bradley for her 70th goal of the season, second of the game for the Presidents. And for La Rochelle, scoring 70 goals this year. She has 239 career points now, 187 career goals, Kevin. She kind of took an extra step, possibly to force Bradley off of that right. near post, right. and then that's where she slid the shot in. Make the goaltender slide, create a little more shooting area, uh, target area for the shot. They get a face-off win by the Presidents and another foul against the Titans, so possession for La Rochelle. Really no chance to shoot from there, so she just flips it to Bolas, who moves right, tries to dodge at the 12, now steps back and surveys. La Rochelle, she's going to attack, spins, turns. Oh, all the way to the right, good secondary defense by Braddock. But Bob Brovnikova has the rebound. It's going to walk in tight, flips it in front, and we're tied at three. Bob Brovnikova to Bullis, and the President's two in a row to knock the game up. Well, it was initially good defense by Braddock, <clears throat> but we're going to call her Bob. Sophia Bob picked it up, and she went down below goal line extended and did a nice job with an over-the-top pass out in front to uh, Kayla Bullis, who quickly caught it and released it. And that's her 10th of the season. We're tied at three. That one coming at 9.37 of the first half. Bob Brovnikova gets the helper. And two in a row for La Rocheau and Bullis after D'Amico had scored three of the game's first four goals. Jenna Allen had the first president's goal, and it's 3-3. For Bullis, she didn't have any points in the uh, earlier season matchup. By the way, this is the fourth meeting all time between these two schools. The win earlier in the year for Westminster was their first against the Presidents. 
as D'Amico tries to work her way ahead. The ball knocked away from Allen temporarily, but she gets it back. Gives it to Michaela Hayes on the near side. Flips it over. That was kind of a dangerous pass, and it actually turns into a president's foul as she worked it to Bria Braddock. 13 goals in the match in April 9th. Six goals already in the first 10 minutes here. It was Miller with the foul. There's a <clears> pass that actually comes through one attacker, but came to a secondary one, but the Titans lose the ball. Then they're called for a violation on the attack, and it's going to give possession to the presidents. So that was actually a foul called against the Titans. So WJ will work the long field on the far side of the field. That's Lem Gamble on the run into the attack zone. Or Caitlin White, excuse me. Good steal. Brooke Lysak just took it away and counterattacks that quickly for the Titans. All the, the way, Lysak. She just keeps running. Remember that athleticism and the <laughs> running that Coach Eldred was talking about? There it was. And there's a good feed to Irvine. Emily Irvine spins inside the 12. Has to go for the ground ball now. He had it picked up temporarily. We had a whistle and a foul called against W and J. That's good steal and clear by uh, Lysak. She ran about 60 yards down the far sideline before spotting a teammate in the middle of the field who tried to do the kind of a turnaround dodge shot. Mason on the reset, left side of Bria Braddock. She's going to try to snake her way in. Has to turn around and pick the ball up off the turf. Being guarded over there by Sherwood. Behind that, it goes to Hayes. She just had an assist earlier on a D'Amico goal from below the goal line. That's good defense by W and J. Ball goes up in the air. We get a whistle. That was Bullis, I think, on the defense. Actually, check it. Allison Onslow, the lone senior. She is a confidant of Coach Valerio, being together for four years. She says they get together and talk about many things, not just lacrosse. She's one of the leaders, too. Great communicator, she said, what you need back on the on the defensive right. end. <clears throat> you got to have that one voice. And when you have a freshman goalkeeper, you have a senior defender, and it's probably going to be that senior defender. Mason triple teams. Has to work all the way back out. And then cuts inside, and we get a whistle. She kind of split the defense. It was a double-team defense. Miller was one of the players on the defense. Bobrovnikova as well. Mason finds the Miko, but started too whistle. soon. Full start against Westminster. The official pointed to the left and then patted the top of her head. The far official ran all the way over towards the 50 to inform the uh, score the scorebook on what the and Coach Eldridge the as reason. well, yeah. who doesn't seem happy but maybe satisfied. I just think that the, they started before the whistle, before the okay from the officials. That gives possession <clears throat> back to the Presidents. About 13 minutes into this first half. 3-3 match between W and J, the two seed. Westminster, the one seed. Randy Gore, our producer and director here on the PAC Sports Network. Okay. Kevin Zomanski, my partner. Bob Workwitz, glad you're aboard. Good. LaRochelle has the ball dislodged by Braddock. That's a great matchup. And we get a whistle and a foul charge against Bria Braddock. Another good trail check by Braddock. She was kind of was uh, trailing behind the, carry, the ball carry and was able to reach up and just dislodge it from the basket. But we're going to have a free position here for the Presidents. From the 12, so no shot for La Rochelle. <laughs> Flips it to Allen, who comes to Bob Rub Nikova, who is actually on the near side. But she works her way from left to right. Gets it inside of Jenna Allen. Turns it down low. And in front, they put it in. I think that was Polchinski. I think it was Bolas. Bolas, excuse me. Polchinski on the other side. And Bolas got opened down low. Actually, no, Alexis Miller. It's yeah, going to get the sorry, goal for the right. Presidents. I got the Appreciate wrong 20. Goal, number 20, Alexis Miller, assisted by number 12, Jenna Allen. Miller from Allen. So Miller gets her first goal to go with an assist. And now Allen gets an assist to go with her goal. And the Presidents have taken their first lead of the contest at 4-3. to three. Well, <clears throat> that one comes at 12. What I liked about that one is Allen did something you don't often see in women's lacrosse. She spun and used a left-handed pass. The women predominantly will stay with their right hand most of the time. She, she spun, switched hands, uh, changed the angle of the pass, and spotted uh, Alexis Miller, who was able to quickly put it in to give the presidents a 4-3 lead. 19th goal of the year for Alexis Miller, and there's a draw control. 
for the Presidents and Clara Sherwood. Sherwood now is over 60 on the draw control number with a couple here this afternoon. <coughs> she leads the Presidents in that category. That leads to possessions, which leads to goals, which leads to wins, right? Draw or, control. Or am, I being, or am I being too simple? No, draw control can get you on a run. It runs, runs create m momentum for your team and really put the pressure on uh, uh, your opponent to uh, step up their defense. Abrov Nikova <laughs> on that comfortable right wing side, but Bria Braddock, was she outstanding at both ends? Her defense is outstanding as well, but Abrov Nikova picks up the ground ball, but the trail check from Braddock creates the turnover. There comes the run out for the Titans and Marissa Keller. Keller puts it up to Irvine. She's going to try to get into the attack zone near side of Hayes. And they enter inside the 20. And Hayes down below the goal line to her right will set up the attack for Westminster down a goal. There's the cutter. And it's stopped on the goal line. How about that job? Not only the initial save by Len Festi, Kevin, but presence enough to turn around and trap yeah. that ball before it trickled across the goal line. Another good feed from the X by Hayes. Michaela Hayes behind the net. When Fetsky was able to follow it, track the ball, track the pass, make the save, and then find it <clears throat> right at the goal line near the left post and uh, smother it before it rolled over there. Keeps it a 4-3 to three game. White can't get out of her own zone, so she has to flip it back to Lenfesti in the goal. Lenfesti almost turned it over as D'Amico does sort of create the turnover for Megan Polchinski, the freshman from Norwin. We do get a whistle and a foul. Lem Gamble was close to that. I remember Gamble playing for Winchester Thurston, or the Ellis School, excuse me. Wrong private school in the uh, city. But close to each other. I was knocked away. Mason resets. 66 on the shot clock. Worth mentioning, first year for the shot clock in college lacrosse. Patient set with Braddock guarded by Gamble. Braddock mentioned the surgery, nursing a bad shoulder, and also she's some tape on that right knee. So she's just banged up. Generally in a sport, when you get to the championship game, you're going to be banged up, especially when you're one of the focal points, as Bria Braddock is. Yeah, the difference between what they say being hurt and being injured. Correct. As D'Amico gets the pass from Braddock. D'Amico and Mason at the top of the formation. Attack for D'Amico down the right side. She'll fire and Lefesti closes the legs and got the basket down to shut the five hole. Makes the save and gathers the rebound. Closed the legs and kind of took that one off the right shin and it fell right down at her feet. She was able to pick it up and now she triggers the outlet here as they try to clear. But good pressure. She talked about the relax. Coach Eldridge talked about liking the pressure to get the. When we don't have the ball, we want the ball back as quickly as possible. And yeah, you see that ride. pressure up the field. And Polchinski called for a foul <clears> midfield. <throat> the Lenfesti between the two freshman keepers, along with Emma Bradley, Lenfesti, Kevin, has been busier. Yeah, she's had to make a few more saves. Uh, although uh, Bradley was in the, in the crosshairs on all those restarts on yeah. those free possessions there for a few minutes. Ball down low, but on the goal line, there's a cut and a reset in the shot missed by Miller, who scored the last goal. Piper Shinsky behind the cage is fouled, so possession stays with W and J. She's going to get the free position on uh, below the goal line left on the near side of the field. They reset the shot clock, and they also move Marissa Keller behind Piper Shinsky. Shinsky, the freshman from Princeton, New Jersey. Went to the Hunt School in New Jersey. That's La Rochelle walking out on the near side. Flips it around to Bullis, who has a goal. Opposite side to Shinsky, attacking on the right side. Guarded well there by Keller, so she just dumps it below the goal line, and they'll reset with La Rochelle, who likes to walk out. She'll turn, spin to the backhand, and draws the double team and draws the foul. And I'm sure in her career, she's done that a lot. Yeah. Well, you saw her ability there. She <clears throat> steps out on the curl, and then she rolls back and tries to go to the left side and quickly triple team. The defenders slid over there to kind of cut off her angle to the net, but the free position shot right here. Near side with the free <clears throat> position for La Rochelle. She's going to duck inside and score <laughs> on the free position goal. It's 5-3 to three, W and J for La Rochelle, second of the game 
71st of the year, and for Ray La Rochelle, that is her 15th three position goal three position on the season. Goal for Washington, Jefferson, number 17, Ray La Rochelle, and her well, what I like she did right there is she took, she started running, and then she lowered her basket. She lowered her lacrosse, so she was able to protect the ball a little bit more from the defenders, and then she was able to get it back up to take the shot and finish the play, pick up her 71st goal of the season. As I believe we have a timeout here by Westminster. Westminster does take a timeout, 12-10 to go in this first half. Four unanswered goals for W&J. It's the President's five, the Titans three. You're watching coverage of the PAC Women's Lacrosse Championships right here on the PAC Sports Network. Well, who do you think you are? Walk through these gates and you'll find out. It'll take, oh, four years. Four years of rigorous academics, of grand tradition, citizenship, of making friends for life, and let's not forget, having fun. While you're doing all this, we have a job too, to ensure your success. And make no mistake, we're good at it. Welcome to Bethany, a small college of national distinction. Now fully co-ed, Chatham University offers over 40 majors in the health sciences, sustainability, business, and the arts and sciences. Qualified undergraduates can also be admitted into our integrated undergraduate and graduate programs in physical and occupational therapy, physician assistant studies, and more. Live on our historic Shadyside campus or our Eden Hall campus, the first in the world built for the study of sustainability. Strong academics, Division Three men's and women's sports, one-of-a-kind campus locations. Chatham edu thanks for watching live coverage of the president's athletic conference lacrosse championships on the pac sports network today's broadcast is also available via the pac digital network app on roku and apple tv and also if you want to purchase your own digital copy of today's game email the pac sports network at info at pac stream that's pac dot -E net and a digital download of today's broadcast just 25 dollars Kevin Zomansky, Bob Work was here in the booth at Westminster College, Bury Stadium. The Titans had jumped to a 3 to one lead, Kevin, but four unanswered for W and J. Yeah, I was just going to say four straight goals for the Presidents, including the 71st goal of the season from Ray Loverschell in that free position there. That one at 17.50 of the first half. <clears throat> Timeout taken by Coach Eldridge trying to stop the momentum for the Presidents. Uh, we're going to get this... Um, draw control here to see if you know the presidents get another possession here they can uh, milk that clock a little bit heading towards halftime and try to get their fifth consecutive goal how about the accolades pile up for ray la rochelle she went to sandwich high school in east sandwich massachusetts massachusetts the junior we'll forgive her if she's a patriots fan <laughs> she's in enemy territory so she knows that she was the 2017 orlc offensive player of the week and also the newcomer of the year she was all ORLC first team in 2018, and she was the PAC Offensive Player of the Week in the final week of the regular season this year. I don't know if that was a different uh, player for the Titans that time. Uh, Margo Mason took that. but Yeah, they probably switched it out. Yeah, she, they switched it out because they were standing on the same time, and that time they, standed, they stood opposite each other. And uh, But the president still won it, yep. and here they have another possession. Came near side to Lower <clears> Shell. Working on their uh, four straight goals, looking for their fifth. Another D.C. There's Shinsky with a hesitation and Ooh. moving right. She is hammered inside the eight by Brooke Lysak. And Shinsky lost her eyewear. She'll have to put the goggles back on and she'll get the free position opportunity straight on. The presidents are looking for that seam between the lower defenders and the upper defenders for the for the Titans. But then those, those high defenders are collapsing, and that's where we're getting the fouls and the free positions for the presidents as they're coming down and preventing that easy goal in front. They're going to make them work for it from the arc. <clears throat> Shinsky will walk, bounce it in. Good that save. is denied. Bradley went down low to make the save. Braddock trying to track down the rebound on the ground ball, and she does, and we get a whistle. But a violation against the Titans. So possession over to the presidents with Miller. Looking at the stats, it wouldn't surprise you now if we watch this first half, but Bria Braddock leads the Titans in ground balls with 90. And we've seen her defensive prowess here in the first Big half. It's interesting. I was just thinking before Shinsky took the free position shot, Kevin, that we talked to Coach Eldridge. She mentioned that W&J was very physical in the mm -hmm. overtime loss earlier in the year. 
I think Westminster has been the more physical of the teams here this afternoon. Well, that, this that opening draw control, there was a hit early on over here in the 35, and then since then I think that kind of maybe uh, showed the Titans that, look, you know, we're going to have to be a little more physical here tonight against this team in this championship game. And a whistle, and the ball was knocked out of bounds on the far side, so the Presidents will get possession with Carly Hopkin. Hopkin, the junior from North Allegheny High School in Wexford, Pennsylvania. She is attacked right away by Polchinski. Hey, North Allegheny and Norwood. Have we seen that rivalry at all in the WPIL? Girls basketball. That's, yeah, that's it was big the, this year in basketball. It's been been for the past several years. Oddly in the same section. Ball was flipped out to Bobrovnikova. She turned around and sent to Miko flying. And Bob just she kept going. <laughs> Cheryl Emmert brings Keep her playing until you hear a whistle. That's right. That's correct. Well, actually, the second whistle. Yeah, she ignored did, the first she one. She did ignore the first one. So she'll reset in her own zone. Flips it up the far side to Miller, who is picked over there by Radinick down the right wing side in the whistle against Radinick. No, they continue. Well, she just walks in, so that wasn't a foul, just a violation. Below <laughs> the net they go. Near side to La Rochelle. Looks for a cutter. Couldn't quite get the pass to Sherwood, so goes to the secondary cut. Bullis, the spacing wasn't that great. We get a whistle and a foul against the Presidents, or against the Titans, excuse me. So from the 12, it's La Rochelle with the free position. Straight on. Maybe she steps and fires. Walks so. and dodges. And who else? Bria Braddock. Braddock creates the turnover. Six defenders converged on La Rochelle right there. You know, she's got 71 on the year. You and need six. 188 in the career. I'm sure she's used to that. If you need that collapse. If you need six, you do it. If you need seven, you do that. As many as you can get, right? Here comes the opportunity the other way for the Titans. They would sure like a goal, trailing five to three. Romy Schweikert had it as we approached nine minutes to go before halftime. Romy Schweikert, the junior attack, goes down below the goal line. Schweikert from Hiram. Hiram, Ohio, in Crestwood High School. There's a cut, and D'Amico has her fourth for the Titans. She makes it a one-goal game. Again, what a great feed from behind the net. Michaela Hayes has set up shot on the X behind the cage of the Presidents, and her and D'Amico have that, that telepathy. She keeps feeding it to D'Amico, and D'Amico keeps finishing. Fourth of the game for D'Amico. That's her 50th of the year. Hayes with another assist. Hayes wears number 15, Kevin. She should wear 99. <laughs> yeah, for, for, for those familiar the with the other sport. Well, everyone should be familiar with Wayne Gretzky, don't you think? I would hope so, but I don't want to speak for everyone. Well, if they're not, just email me. <laughs> I can get them up to speed, as can you. You said 50? 50 for D'Amico, right? 40, oh, 49, excuse me, or 48. 48. My seven looked like a nine. So 48, all four for D'Amico. Hayes with her second assist. And, again, she set up the offense for him to blow the goal line for the Titans very well here this evening. Another draw control, though, for the Presidents. They're leading in that category. There's Shinsky. She was quadruple teamed, and Braddock had her basket on the loose ball, and it's forced to the opposite side, and Marissa Keller comes up with a GB for the Titans. Well, we're under nine minutes. I'm, I'm kind of fascinated by the nine goals after uh, seven to six in the first one in overtime. So they must have discussed, you know, watched some video, discussed some different attack options, and uh, both teams have been successful scoring goals. They are uh, the two highest scoring teams in this conference. 256 <clears throat> now in the season for Westminster. With their five, the Presidents are up to 193. That's quite a disparity, although there are some teams, some of the lower-level teams, where Coach Eldridge was talking about, we're putting up numbers, and then she was worried about getting her players hurt in those games and taking them out, her starters. <laughs> she also said it's unfair maybe to, you know, her keeper, Emma Bradley, because she puts in the reserves, and then Bradley's given up some goals late. And Coach Eldridge said, hey, don't worry about that. We understand. There's a foul on Hayes below the goal line. Hayes is called for the foul. She was locked up there behind the goal line with Jenna Allen. And when you did Hayes get carded? 
I think she did. It's going to be a man-up situation for the Presidents. That'll be the first yellow card of the year for Michaela Hayes. Yep. She is <coughs> over at midfield. <laughs> She's kneeling next to the pylon of shame. <laughs> but shorthanded, it's possession for the Titans. Mason, who has really not had a lot of touches. Her pass to Braddock is off the mark. Braddock saves it. <laughs> But the presidents are on the ball, Ooh. but they lose it. There's a big collision near midfield. It's going to be a Westminster foul against Lexi Redinick. And she collided with Sherwood. Sherwood's going to get the restart <clears throat> down the right side. Another push. Coach Eldridge was talking about a lot of running, and she said it's a lot different now with this start and stop. She pensioned it, you know. That's why she, she says, you know, if I can get an athlete, I'm confident that I can teach them the game right. of lacrosse. So I'm sure that's what she had to do <clears throat> three years ago when she started this program. She talked about Madeline Holland, who is the sophomore goalkeeper on this team, never playing goal before. And that's what happens when you're just in the third year of existence. Uh, Hopkins took that one right in the teeth. She was holding her mouth. Again, going to mention it once, my crusade. They should be wearing helmets. Yeah, you had a conversation with Coach Eldridge about that. <clears throat> she doesn't want it at all. I don't. I'll never understand it. Bob Rob Nikova, had La Rochelle defended by Braddock, who gets the turnover, redefending is Bob Rob Nikova. She's called for the foul. Especially now with the focus continuing each year on on head injuries and head trauma in every sport. Right. That's kind of the driving uh, thought process that I have. But, I mean, you have a lot of, it's a newer sport for a lot of people, and sometimes uh, they don't do what uh, experienced players will do. And, and I don't know, it just it seems logical. Why do you want to take one in the, in the head or the chops if you don't have to? <clears throat> so Jeldrick back in her playing career, played at William & Mary. She had a great career. Coach Valerio played at Niagara. She was a four-year letter winner for the Purple Eagles. Played in 40, 40, 54 of their 56 games in her career. Another foul and another foul against the Titans. And we got a card against the, is it against the Presidents or is it against Braddock? Or is it against both? Because both Bob Rub, Nikova, and Braddock trot to the sideline. Well, that's a uh, hot. So I think both yeah. of them, Bob Rovnikova and Braddock are carded. Okay, that let me correct something. Bob Rovnikova was the one that took it in the teeth earlier. I identified the wrong number, and I still think she's a little salty about it, which has kind of led to this um, double foul as she kind of threw her cross down to the ground. She's not kneeling. She's standing, and she's a bit of a salty look on her face over there. Salty is a nice way to – well, she's from Philadelphia, by the way. Well – Salty, a nice way to say angry, or worse. Knocking down, that's an opportunity in tight. It Ooh. wasn't Lower Shell. It was actually sure would have got in tight. She got knocked down, but then the Titans almost turned it over. Marissa Keller trying to scoop up the ground ball, and she does, but has the cross knocked out of her hand by Alexis Miller, who creates the turnover and the counterattack for the Presidents. Good ride there by Miller. We'll work it to Caleb Bullis. Bullis has a goal, but she lost the ball, and it's Hayes with the ground ball and the turnover, trying to work her way into the att attack against Lem Gamble. Also over there defending was Bullis for the Presidents. And then we get a whistle as we're under five minutes to go in this first half, a 5-4 lead. For W and J over Westminster, Westminster here at Burry Stadium, hosting the championship, courtesy of being the highest seed. They were the number one seed. These two teams, the top two seeds in this tournament. There's a cut. Margot Mason working, firing, and missing the near post. First opportunity, Kevin, of the game for Margot Mason. She of the 85 goals on the season. She was a bit of a blur there, where she accelerated right down the slot area, was not able to finish that one, but. You can see her ability. Cipriani, <clears throat> Katie Cipriani, by the way, checked in for Westminster. She had the backup, so Polchinski playing with a broken right wrist is knocked down. A little hip check from Hopkin. 
Reed and go back to the North Allegheny Norwin rivalry that I talked about earlier. And Polchinski, whose father is the lacrosse coach at Norwin, is going to get a free position from the 12 straight on. There's been a lot of players it's picking themselves up it's off a, the I turf. Think you said it's a right wrist, it's a left wrist. No, you would expect nothing less in a, <laughs> right. in a championship game, right? Even the, you, you think that because they don't allow there's certain restrictions in, in uh, women's cross versus male, but th this has been an awfully physical match here today. Polchinski has scored four free position goals on the season. She scored the overtime winner against W and J. Fires in the save. Kind of uh, made it look easy, did Sam Munfesti, the freshman, on the free position opportunity for Polchinski. Cipriani was knocked down. WJ reverses to come forward. And they'll flip it up to Jenna Allen. She has problems with it. She's going to be marked there by Schweikert. Schweikert is called for the foul. And they continue. There's that continuation. Allen works into the attack zone for Westminster. Or for WJ, leading 5-4. to four. Allen to La Rochelle. Ray La Rochelle against the double team. Tries to dodge. Her pass is tries to find Miller, and that's well defended as Cortland Dowds created the turnover, and then the ball was picked up off the turf by Emma Bradley. Well, second time we've seen a poor clearing attempt by Bradley. Not as bad as the first one where she turned right. it over to so La Rochelle in scoring territory. She just kind of lollipop that one out, but she is. Shaking her right hand as I was watching her as the clear was occurring. Here comes the counter with Polchinski. Opposite side, oh. Polchinski to Hayes. And we're tied at five. So Hayes was doing the dishing. This time she did the firing and ties the game up for Westminster. Well, it was triggered by Bradley. Not well, but it was still triggered. Then the clear went down the field. In that time, Megan Polchinski was coming down the right alley, and she saw Hayes cut into the net, and Hayes uh, did a nice job coming from the left wing side down the left alley, catching and firing. Uh, I have been super impressed with the hands of Hayes. Not only with that shot, the feeding, but she's picked up a couple of GBs very cleanly. Uh, she may not be the fastest on the field, but she's got super hands there. And once again, they were on display on that uh, finish. 24th goal of the, the season for Michaela Hayes, the junior from Blairsville, Blairsville High School. She's an engineering and physics major here at Westminster College. So we had a late substitution for the presidents. So Westminster has battled back. They gave up four unanswered to W&J, and the presidents took a 5-3 to three lead. The last two goals for the Titans have knotted this contest up at five apiece. Three minutes till halftime. Tied at five. Very competitive championship match. <clears throat> we get a look at the draw control again here. Mason was in on the draw control. It was actually Bobrov Nikova, who had 48 draw controls coming into today's match. We get a whistle. We get another card. We do. Schweikert is going to go off. Didn't see what happened on that one. <clears throat> so W&J now with an opportunity in this tie game late in the first half. It's Cipriani on the ride, then Hayes, but just running through those. Caitlin White, she beats a third player. Good second effort, though. Redefending for Cipriani to create the turnover. Yeah, they kind of steered her, cut the angle down, and when she had the right opportunity, she kind of pounced there, and uh, Cipriani with, with her lacrosse, knocking it loose and getting possession back for the Titans. <clears throat> Margo Mason trying to work out of her own end, has the ball knocked away, and then she's fouled by Bobrovnikova. Still salty, by the way. <laughs> Westminster's pass deflected as Polchinski tried to force it forward, but Braddock has it on the attack, steps in was picked up there by Hopkin. Braddock spinning on the left side, tries to attack, she can't get in. She's forced down below the goal line. Braddock now on the near side will just under it to Hayes, but it's in and out of her basket, and Len Festi will pick it up in the crease. And WJ, with under two to go before halftime, has possession back. Well, they like to run the offense through Hayes on the X, and they try to get it there to set it up, but uh, just was not a clean delivery on the pass, and 
turnover, gives it back to the Presidents as we wind down here in the first half. Jenna Allen was trying to work her way through. And we're going to get card. D'Amico's going to get carded. And we're talking about hockey. I'm looking at embellishment. <laughs> Although, to Allen, Allen did take a couple of whacks, but when the third one came and the check came, I think she embellished it a little bit, but she did her job. She drew the card. So two Titans <clears throat> players are now off with yellow cards. D'Amico, and D'Amico is joined by Schweiker. On the unhappy fans of the Titans below us. So a chance late for W and J. <coughs> They'll start in their own zone trying to work it up. They have had players off of the car, but they haven't had much possession, Kevin. They haven't really set up the offense at all in this scenario. They won't do it here as it is Cortland Dowds, the junior, working to pick up that loose ball. And Dowds goes one-on-one -on -one with Miller out of bounds off of Westminster. We're going to get a card. Another card, right? A green card. Oh, a green card. Green card against Emily Marcus. Marcus, the criminal justice major, the junior from South Park. She's going to write a thesis on this green <laughs> card, I'm sure, being a criminal justice and why, it, why she thinks it was an injustice. <laughs> I like the Alexis Miller there. She was uh, creating position like you would in a, uh, the low post in basketball, blocking on her defender. She just couldn't get the GB, so when the whistle came, she picked it up and put it in her basket. All sorts of room and numbers advantage <laughs> for the presidents. Bob Rob, Rob the cover down low, and it was bouncing in and out of the basket of Allen, and then she was pressured by Bradley, and she forced it wide, and it's Titans possession with a half a minute to go before halftime. That was Romy Schweikert with the backup beating her to the uh, end line there. So give the t Titans the ball back as they uh, try to get one last possession here before the half. Good spin there by Margo. And another whistle. It's over midfield too quickly. They will stop the clock now. And if you're the Titans with all these cards, you'd be happy to just tick the final 15 seconds. It's Mason. Mason's got the ability to go end to end. She's open with eight seconds. She comes right with six. Flips it to the net, but didn't get a lot on it. Easy save for Len Festi as the horn sounds, and the first half comes to an end. Pretty good first 30 minutes in the PAC Women's Lacrosse Championship here at Burry Stadium at Westminster College. W and J five. Westminster 5. We're going to take a break. We'll be back to recap the first half, get you some official stats as well as you're watching live coverage of the President's Athletic Conference Women's Lacrosse Championship. It's right here on the PAC Sports Network. When you're seriously in debt, you know that feeling. It returns every time the phone rings. Things are out of control. A job you were counting on didn't come through or you got sick. No matter how it got to this point, your creditors don't care or understand, but I do. It's not too late. I can help. If you're embarrassed, overwhelmed, or frustrated, don't be. I'm not here to judge. I'm here to help, and you do need help. Please call me. There is a way out, and I'll get you there. The biggest thing with Consolidated is their customer service. They treat you like a preferred client even if you're just starting with them. They've truly taken the time to understand who we are as a business and recommend the best product and services based upon that knowledge of who we are. Being able to rely on a technology partner like CCI to provide the fiber backbone means that our internet signal is completely reliable. I can't recommend any other parties. Consolidate is my first choice. When you're in college, you kind of find out who you are. And throughout your four years, you develop yourself with all the different experiences, which leads into dedicating yourself to your community, to your family. So when you're a senior, you're coming out a well-rounded person. College has given me the flexibility 
to pursue my passions and my interests outside of the classroom and outside of the court or field. I've had the ability to get into different activities and organizations, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. Getting to be involved in a lot of different things, ranging from obviously being a student athlete to getting involved with my campus and my community, and not only being allowed to do that, but being encouraged to do that. The opportunity be, to be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, to have the professors know me on a personal level, all of those things came together uh, very nicely in one package in Division Three. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. It really helps you develop thinking from other people's perspectives and looking at problems from outside the box. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. I've definitely learned how to really be myself. I found out, yes, I am actually a good leader and yes, I can actually put myself forward because I am good enough, I can do it. Coming in to college, I just wanted to get good grades and to do well. But it also made me realize that I have a lot of different career goals and I've learned so much about myself that I was always like growing and changing. When I got to college, it forced me to step up and become more of a leader. And I think that was something I had the capability of doing. And forever grateful that being at a Division III school gave me that opportunity. You have to dedicate your time in the classroom, you have to dedicate your time in the gym, on the field, on the court. Our coaches and all the entirety of the athletic department, they valued the student athlete going out to community and trying something new and getting involved in campus life. You can get involved in so many different things. Um, so the possibilities are truly limitless for what you can do with your college experience. You can kind of make it your own in the Division Three setting. So I would encourage people who want to have flexibility to pursue different interests and passions to go D3. When you are in need of fast, affordable, and professional voiceovers, contact Time Ad Productions. Time Ad Productions offers voice services for business presentations, documentary narrations, radio television imaging and commercials, movie trailers, corporate phone systems, websites, audiobooks, and more. Visit or contact us online at www.timeadproductions.com. With two locations in Washington County at the McMurray Shops in Peters Township and Trinity Point in Washington. Back in New Wilmington, Pennsylvania, Westminster College. Bob Work was Kevin Zomanski. Live coverage of the President's Athletic Conference Women's Lacrosse Championship between Westminster and WJ from Westminster College, the number one seed. The Titans, Kevin, jumped out to a 3-1 to one lead. Four unanswered for W and J. The final two goals in the first half scored by the Titans, which means we've decided nothing <laughs> after the first 30 minutes. After the first 30, we are where we were prior to the start of this match. But here is your scoring recap. <clears throat> At 132 in the first half, it was Emily D'Amica for Westminster, giving a one nothing lead her 45th of the season. W and J tied it at the 220 mark. Jenna Allen uh, from Alexis Miller. Uh, I didn't get Allen's. What was her score of the season? Her seventh? Seventh. It's the only one I didn't mark down. Okay, then Westminster regained the lead at the 529 mark, 2-1. to one. Emily D'Amico picked up her second of the game, 46th of the season from Bria Braddock. Westminster extended the lead to about two minutes later to 720 mark. Emily D'Amico completed the hat trick, her 47th from Michaela Hayes. Um, give Westminster the 3-1 to one lead. W&J made it. Uh, closed the gap to one, made it 3-2 uh, to two at 8.58. It was Ray LaRoche, her 70th of the season. That one was unassisted. WJ tied at 9.37 mark. It was Kayla Bowles, her 10th from Sophia 
Bobrovnikova. Bob. <clears throat> Bob. You know, I had that in my head until it's time to say it. Then it's 4-3 to three, W&J when Alexis Miller picked up her 19th at the 12-26 mark from Jenna Allen. WG extended the lead at 5-3 to three at the 12-50 mark when Ray LaRoche scored her 71st goal of the season from a free position. At that time, Coach Kim Eldridge took the timeout for Westminster. And it seemed to help. A couple minutes later, at the 20-57 mark, Emily D'Amico picked up her fourth of the game, 48th of the season, on another feed from Michaela Hayes from behind the net. And then not long after that, Michaela Hayes got on the score sheet with her 15th goal of the season on a good clear transition goal with a good feed across one alley to the other from Megan Polchinski. Tied it at five. And that's where we stand at the halftime uh, of this PAC Women's D3 Championship match. Let's take a quick break. We'll get you some uh, official stats. And we'll start the second half right after this. Westminster and w &J tied at the half. You're watching live coverage of the President's Athletic Conference Women's Lacrosse Championship on the PAC Sports Network. Jenna Frederick, I graduated from Geneva in 2012 with a degree in engineering. At Geneva, they minister to the whole person. I was asked questions that I never knew that I would need the answers for. They really dig into the deep topics which became my core beliefs and those core beliefs became anchors that I was able to hold on to. There was no time in my life that there were more passionate and compassionate Christian leaders pouring into my life. Employers seek after the kind of character and values that are instilled in students that go to Geneva. Faith and freedom are far-reaching matters for us. The freedom to pursue a calling in life and the faith that it will make a big difference. The freedom to use the value of an education to pay it forward and the Christian faith to make it count. At Grove City College, faith and freedom create opportunities. And that's why faith and freedom matter. Back at Burry Stadium, Bob Work with Kevin Zomanski. The stats as the score were pretty even through the first 30 minutes. Washington and Jefferson outshot Westminster 17 to 12. That's are not shot on goals. The shots on goals were even at 10 apiece. Ground balls 13 apiece, so that was even. Draw controls as we suspected. WJ won that category 7 to 3, and both goalkeepers were even as well, Kevin. Yeah, both allowed five goals, but they both made five saves. Uh, also, Sam Lenfeski for uh, WJ picked up three ground balls, um, two turnovers, where Bradley has two ground balls, one turnover. So uh, the one thing, 15 to 12 in turnovers for WJ, 23 fouls for Westminster. That jumps off the stat sheet Big also. Time, yes. 23 to 12. 23 to, 23 to 13. I'm sorry, yeah. 13, yeah. One other <clears> thing, we were talking about it, uh, the leading ground ball player in this game, Ray LaRochelle, has picked up four. Bria Braddock, who was so effective, picked up three. But here's the number that stood out, I think, to us with their defense, Kevin. Five caused turnovers for Bria Braddock. Yeah, and that was obvious watching it. We could see she was doing a good job knocking the ball out of the basket of the presidents. And we're getting ready here for the restart here to start of the second half. Um, 30 minutes from deciding the inaugural champion. At least. At least 30. Could be more. Remember, Correct. We, went, we went extra time earlier in the season between these two schools. The black shirts for the presidents, they'll move left or right across your computer screen. The navy blue and white for Westminster, they'll go opposite way. Skying to win that draw was Margo Mason. And then Mason was hit right at the circle, and that's a foul against the president. So possession for Westminster College to start the second half. That's Polchinski down the right side. Dodges to the left against the zone. Back to Mason. Mason really that one opportunity. She was very quiet in the first half. Margot Mason had three shots, two of them on goal, but no really great scoring opportunities. She was trying to dodge right there, ended up feeding it to Braddock, who gives behind to Hayes. That's where Hayes has been good. <coughs> Hayes with a goal and assists. Out to Bria Braddock on the right side. Braddock is watched there by Allen. Still patient on the possession, halfway through the 90-second shot clock. D'Amico, who has been the star of the game with four goals, has possession now for the Titans. Half the pass from Mason. D'Amico left side, Mason right side. 
And they play catch at the top of the formation. Bouncing it down low. Hayes is going to have to retract. She's being chased by Caitlin White. Hayes did a good job to keep it in bounds. Or did she? Yeah, she did. Flips it there to Polchinski. Polchinski to Braddock. Looking for a cutter. Stamiko. Underneath Polchinski. Couldn't get that clean in the basket. Ball still on the ground. Five seconds of the shot clock. Polchinski in traffic. It's still loose. And that's a shot clock violation against the Titans. Our first, first shot yes, first, first of violation of the match. Well, they were patient, and then they kind of, with about maybe 15 <laughs> seconds, maybe 18, Kevin, went into their set. Polchinski trying to steal in great scoring position inside the eight. It's going to dump it off the ground to the net and up high with the basket. Lenfesti made the save. A little bit of a scoop shot right there. That was well done. Creative. Yeah. Better save for Lenfesti. Oh, good spin right there, but you fumbled it. Returns and picks it up. Allison Onslow. Again, the lone senior from Erie, Pennsylvania, Villa Maria Academy. Another whistle. President's trying to work through midfield with Alexis Miller. Miller's going to just go one on one with Lexi Redinick. Draws the whistle, gets an opportunity. Not yet into the attack zone inside the. Or is inside the attack zone, excuse me. Which is 25 yard mark. Miller does a nice job in the clear. Just she kind of creates separation with her body, gives a little bump to the defender. I noticed that too. <clears throat> I like that. Kind of reminds you of playing under the basket, right? You know, create a little separation That's in right. basketball. You work it out, the president's still on there. First possession. No opportunity for La Rochelle, so flips oh. it to Bullis. Towards Bullis, I should say. That's great hustle by Bob Brovnikova to keep it in, and then she draws a foul against Bria Braddock. Now another ground ball and a whistle and a hold, and it's a W&J foul. It's possession for the Titans. So Brooke Lysak will run it out of her own zone on the near sideline with plenty of room. Got around La Rochelle, and the Titans can attack here. Polchinski comes left, has the ball dislodged, tracks it down below the goal line. Good job, dude. Step inside of Onslow, showing the moves there. The moves like Jagger for <laughs> Megan Polchinski. I was watching La Rochelle. She seems to be trying to shake off something with her left leg. She does have <clears> a... Uh, Knee brace. A knee brace, one of those neoprene knee braces on her left knee. Knocked down is Margot Mason. She's going to get a free position opportunity for the Titans at the 12. Margot well, Rush just, just not look comfortable, or she's trying to walk off something, one of the two, because she's still in motion. Mason goes in amongst four black jerseys, does get a shot on goal to the far post. And that is stopped by Lenfesti, and she picks up the rebound. And here come the presidents out of their own zone. Margot Mason, 85 goals. She has yet to score here this evening. 23 times on 46 free position shots she has scored during the during the season. So she's a big factor. And WJ has done a good job of limiting her effectiveness here this evening. We get a whistle, and then we get a, another whistle, and we get a card. Can you see what color that is? It appeared to tell. be yellow. It was hard to tell. I don't think it affected the play on the field, so we reset with Megan Polchinski. Cuts, she's open. Back to the right. She switched from left to right, and she was hacked at the eight by Caitlin White, so Megan Polchinski will get a free position opportunity. I thought she was inside the eight. She's got, oh, she was showing the referee some blood. They move her back to the 12, actually. <clears throat> Seeing the umbrellas come out in the stands here. Got a little bit more steady rain falling. Wolchinski dodges to the right. And another whistle. As they reprimand some of the players to the near side of the field on that free position at the near post. So now who gets the ball? It's Katie, or, yeah, Katie Cipriani. For the Titans. 
But from the 12, doesn't shoot it. Flips it back out to Margot Mason. Mason walks against the triple team. Takes a couple whacks from Caitlin White. Takes a whack from Carly Hopkin. And she gets a free position for her efforts. They're being physical with uh, <clears throat> Mason right there, but she did a nice job splitting a D. This is getting reminiscent of that West Mister right. position in the possession in the first, first half, where they had numerous um, numerous restarts right to our left. Mason fires and misses the near post. Back up for Hayes. So took the step. First time we've really seen someone take a step and yeah, fire. Yeah, I was gonna say I've been waiting to see that. I, I like that. Just take the step and let it rip. Here's Mason again. Dodges left, walking, spinning. Looking right, Triple three, teamed. three black jerseys, and she falls down more than she was knocked down, at least right. from my angle, but she draws the foul. I kind of agree with Alexis Miller putting her arms out. I think Mason just lost her balance. Bree gets the pass, going right, firing back. Oh, good save. And Le, 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 Lefesti, Lefesti, excuse me, reached back and made the save to her right with the basket. The reason I talk about step and, and fire on the free position because there's so many players out there and the defensive players are swarming. That's the most space you have. I agree with you, and I want to go back to that three-on-one where Mason lost her bounce mm -hmm. and fell down. Generally, where you're triple team and you're, you're down, you're probably going to get the foul 90% of the time, right. which, what, which is what happened there. We get a whistle. Westminster fans not happy as the Titans are called for a foul. Although... Bobrovnikova is dislodged. And Polchinski with a turnover. She has the ball knocked away. Out of bounds it goes. And a hesitation, and they say, President's ball. And the local folk are uneasy <laughs> over the last sequence of calls. Yeah, the one I see the one kid with the backpack stands up often to protest the calls. Sherwood will force it forward. A little too high for Bullis. Bullis is guarded by Braddock. Bullis does get inside the offensive zone. Out of bounds it goes on the far sideline, but it's, it's going to be over. They lose possession, and the turnover <laughs> gives the ball to <clears throat> Westminster. Well, it seems the halftime discussions were about defense, because at this point in the first half, we had four goals. We have none yet in the second half. Braddock leads the attack down the right side. She gets some contact from behind by Sherwood and Bria Braddock's going to get the free position. But not really the shooting position. She has two of her attackers to the right, one to the one to the right, two to the left, so she's just going to flip it back to Mason on the reset. Working in turning Ooh. shot. Left, left. I'm going to get this right. Lenfesti, a big save <laughs> on the turning shot by Schweiker. Lenfesti has been good here in the second half to start. She's made two saves in the second half. That gives her seven for the match with five in the first half. Here's Braddock. Quickly on the uh, restart, <clears throat> Braddock, Mason, Braddock, score! And the Titans are on top, six to five on the Bria Braddock goal. Should be Margo Mason with the assist. Well, good spot there by Mason. It was a little give and go with Braddock. Braddock gave it to Mason. She she cut to the middle, created a little space. Mason with a nice spot and a good feed there. Mason gets her first point on the assist for Bria Braddock from Blackhawk High School, the junior. 59 goals on the season. And it's a lead for Westminster, 6-5. to five. First time they led in the game since they took that 3-1 to one lead. And then W and J went from there to take a 5-3 to three lead. So Westminster gets the first goal in the second half to go on top, 6-5. to 7.40 mark of the second half. Titans take the 6-5 to five lead. <clears throat> so Braddock, by the way, adding to her career high goal totals, which she set this season. Braddock trying to win that draw control. Titans will scoop it up. D'Amico had four goals in the first half. Attacks on the right side. Down low behind the goal line goes D'Amico. Good job to defend by White to deny the outlet pass from below the goal line, but D'Amico scoops up the ground ball on the near side. There's Mason and Braddock there now at the top of the formation. Back to Mason, near side to D'Amico. Hopkins is in her general vicinity. 
Bit of a change here, attacking our hive instead of giving it to Hayes. Mason scores! She dodged Bob the Cobra, fires inside the near post, 7-5 to five, Westminster. Well, as I was trying to say, the point of attack changed from behind the net with Hayes feeding to out high where Braddock, Hay, uh, D'Amico, and uh, Mason were controlling the controlled the possession for the Titans, and that time Mason just unleashed a uh, shot from the right wing side. Now somebody has uh, got to the party a little bit late, and that's Margo Mason. And I, I get the irony. Hammer of the gods, <laughs> cross of the guards for Mason, 86 <clears throat> goals on the year. Yeah, that'll do. A goal and assist in a span of 28 seconds for Margo Mason. Two goals in 28 seconds for the Titans to lead 7-5. Second time in the contest, they have a two-goal lead. And see if they can get this draw control and get a run going. They got the last one after the goal. 38 seconds, not 28 seconds. Yeah, they did, and that led to the possession and the opportunity for Mason, who fired it in from the right side inside the near post to beat Emma or to beat Len Festi. Violation against a foul call, actually, against the Titans on the draw. And now it's Ray La Rochelle who has scored twice in this game, including on a free position. 71 on the year, time for her maybe to perk up the offense for W and J. There's Brack with another GB, triggering the clear here to the near side. Works it forward to Schweiker. Schweiker finds her teammate Dowds with room. Three strong down the near side. Dowds, Cortland Dowds is gonna go behind the net for the Titans. And now Hayes. they're gonna get it to Hayes back there on the X. So the presidents have White at one post, Allen at the other. Trying to deny Allen actually, or Jenna Allen goes but down low. They find Deep Trailer and Mason fakes a shot, spins, dodges, fires and a whistle. And Mason draws the foul. She'll get the free position opportunity. Very near attack. That strategy mm -hmm. change. It's kind of freed up Margo Mason. Right. They, they varied the attack. Last possession, they were out high. This time they gave it to Hayes. And that allows Mason to back up and, and uh, kind of survey the defense and look for some space. And we have a timeout here taken by, I didn't hear, see I, which they, side. I thought they pointed to Westminster. So. Nope, WJ. Nope, WJ takes the timeout. We'll step aside. We're almost 10 minutes in. To the second half, Westminster. Correction, timeout. Westminster. See, it was Westminster. Westminster 7, WJ 5. You're watching live coverage of the President's Athletic Conference Women's Lacrosse Championship right here on the PAC Sports Network. College, a creative, energetic place that's rooted in academic excellence, innovation, and tradition, where motivated students become motivated graduates, where so much is so close. Teal College, that's where. Teal College, an energetic place focused on your academic and personal success, where so much is so close. Teal College is now enrolling for its new sports management, exercise science, and health systems programs, and more. For more details, visit teal.edu. Hey fans, even when this game goes final, you can visit packstream.net for archived broadcasts, blog articles, and features on PAC athletes. Remember, you can also like the PAC Sports Network on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at PAC Sports. And there's a goal off the timeout, and the Titans add to it. it looks like Brad Bra Braddock might have got that goal. Hey, yep, she's without the cross. Braddock. Another well timeout, another good timeout for Coach Eldridge. And Braddock scores seconds after it. It's 8 5 West Mifflin, Westminster. So Braddock gets her second of the half. 60th of the year for Braddock Mason now in on all three goals here in the second half. This one coming at 9 21, 8 5 lead. First time the Titans have led by three. 
Well, that's what you want to do coming out of a timeout. Yeah, that one happened very quickly. Right after the restart, as we were finishing up, it was Mason quickly to Braddock, and Braddock was then tight, and she just deposited quickly right in the Quickly into the back of the net. <clears throat> yeah. It was, it was bang, bang play for sure as presidents get that draw. Ray La Rochelle in the draw control. She'll come down the near side. Hacked from behind by the trail check of Mason. That's a foul against Margo Mason. Well, we talk about runs. WJ had a run of four in the first half. Now Westminster's on a run of three. Uh, you see that a lot in this sport. And here's an opportunity for the presidents on this possession to kind of stem the tide of the Titans. Close the gap from 8 to 5 to 8 to 6. If they can convert here on this possession, 2016 remaining. We get a whistle and we're going to get some sort of explanation. The Rochelle is actually shaking her right hand after the slash by Mason. Coming over to speak to the uh, scorer's box there at midfield. <clears throat> See the two officials right over there on the 50 yard line, the small table with the umbrella. The longest discussion the officials have had today. Over Shell has the the ball near the other official. She's standing on the right alley near the uh, 20. It would be the 22, 23 yard line as the officials run back to the uh, Westminster side of the field here. Sure, they're maybe trying to reset the clock <laughs> or something. They have to relay that up. So there's no reset there, and we do get a, a gate reset now with Ray Lever Shell on the right side. You mentioned runs. WJ is going to. Have to look for one of those eventually. Bob Nakova dodges right. Can't find the shooting angle. Good defense by the Titans, so they'll go down low. Shinsky goes from right to left. Piper Shinsky below the goal line. Guarded oh, there by Radinic. Deflected away. La Rochelle's going to run it down and keep it in the attack zone. 40 seconds left on the shot clock for the Presidents. Ray La Rochelle on the attack. The spin. Spins into a double team. Has to back it out to Bob Nakova. She attacks. She's open. She's in. Ooh. And dumped it just over top the net. She tried to go high, upper 90, and just missed. Good dodge there by Bobrovnikova. She just went a little too high with that shot over Emma Bradley's basket. <clears throat> Trying to walk it out now, Bobrovnikova. Turning shot. That misses. And the back up provided by the Titans, and it's Westminster possession. I don't know what you're seeing, but we talked about the running of Westminster and they have more players. And at this moment, WJ just looks a little more tired. I me. would agree. I think that's a fair assessment. <clears throat> By the way, three goals in the second half, all for the Titans. They've scored five unanswered in this contest. They turned a 5-3 to three deficit into an 8-5 to five lead. They're in the attack once again with Hayes. Hayes will flip it to Polchinski. And there's Breer Braddock on the near side. Braddock has two goals in the second half. She's open. Looks for the hat trick denied by Sam Lenfesti on a nice save. Mark that one down. Yeah, that was a big save there by Lenfesti as uh, Braddock attacked from uh, the right side on a good dodge from the side. She moved the basket right to left and found some space there slicing in. Unforced error here. Yeah, a turnover for W and J. That's a great sequence. Really good moves by Braddock looking for the hat trick and a Better save. She just got beat yeah, by Lenfesky. Yeah, then Lenfesky with a nice save. <clears throat> Ball forced up. Braddock was double teamed. Lem Gamble was over there. She knocked it away off of Braddock, I think. Didn't see a... Didn't see a... No, it's going to be possession Titans. So that'll be Marcus to key it into Braddock right near midfield. Braddock was trying to saunter left, and then she had to turn it up on another gear. She took a shot to the head by Shinsky. Right here in the uh, at the logo, the white and navy blue W at Burry Stadium, which is actually probably going to be the last time. Final match here. Final match here at uh, Burry Stadium. It'll be the football team specifically. West Westminster is going to have some upgrades, which I'll talk about, time permitting, courtesy of uh, UPMC. We're going to get a new facility for soccer and lacrosse here on campus, amongst other things. D'Amico. Or, DeMar uh, or Margo Mason, excuse me, to Hayes, to Braddock, as they are setting up on the 
near side. That's a left wing. A good spot right there. Switch it. D'Amico, right side open. Shooting. Scoring! 9-5 Titans. Well, Braddock spotted D'Amico on the far side, switched the point of attack from the left alley to the right alley, and then it was a good dodge and shot by Emily D'Amico. Fifth of the game for D'Amico, 49 on the season for the biology major from Moon. An unassisted tally, and the Titans are up 9-5. to five. Didn't give it to Braddock on that one. Hmm. Unassisted goal. Well, she forced it out, and then kind of like in basketball, she made a couple moves yeah. to dodge down the right side. So It was still a good play by Braddock to, to look for the open uh, teammate there. There was a lot of traffic on that left side. You're seeming surprised that Bria Braddock making a good play. No, no, not at all. That time Sherwood stepped into uh, the uh, draw control. We've, we've both been very... Very right. impressed with the play of Bria Braddock. And she's got the ball now. On the attack for Westminster, looking to put a finishing kick here on in the second half. Under 17 minutes to go, and they lead 9-5. to five. That's the biggest lead for either team in this contest. Oh, a good move and a dodge by Mason. And she drew the foul. She made a quick step Ducked to under the double that. team. Yeah. Ducked under it, coming to the left. <coughs> so Margot Mason with the free position. Maybe not a shooting position, but let's see if she runs and maybe fires from distance. We don't know exactly what the discussion was at halftime, but credit Coach Eldridge for the adjustments because the Titans have come out with renewed uh, energy in here. Got the only four goals in the second half. wonder if Mason's going to step and fire here. She's got it sort of pulled back in the potential shooting position where she could just take sort it of, one sort step of, sort of with that there, left yeah. foot. She has it cocked back there and um, looks like she could fire up. She's going to back gonna it back out. out. Maybe Coach Eldred said, listen, my sons are here watching me, <laughs> watching a match for the first time at Westminster. Let's do something to impress them. Yeah, she mentions she's very excited. Her three boys we're going to make it up here today for this championship match. There's a cup for Braddock firing against oh, the Oh, it's a hop. And it hops it in. The hat trick for Braddock and a 10-5 lead for Westminster. The hat trick, all three of them coming in the second half for Braddock. That time she went to the short hop on uh, Sam Lenfesti there of W&J, and it bounced right in. Two goals in 46 seconds. 61 on the year for Bria Braddock, an unassisted marker at 13-49. That will make Ray Eldridge happy. She's the eldest son of Coach Eldridge. He's a football player, freshman at uh, Richmond College in Virginia. Gavin and Chad are soccer players at South Fayette, and that's a needed timeout, I think, for WJ and head coach Allison Valerio. Just over 16 minutes to go. Second half, it's Westminster 10, WJ 5. Jefferson. You're watching the President's Athletic Conference Women's Lacrosse Championship coverage is right here in the PAC Sports Network. It begins here on a beautiful campus in southwestern Pennsylvania. At Waynesburg University, students become leaders in education, in business, in government, and science. They learn to tackle real-world issues with innovation and purpose, and are prepared for these roles within a community that fosters spiritual growth. Waynesburg University, a tradition of faith since 1849. You can't just wait for it. You have to go get it. You have to push yourself. Because limits only begin when hustle stops. You have to work together. Because you can't get there on your own. You'll have support. Because you're more than just a name on a list. And then you'll get there. That's success. And I hope it's ready for me. Because I'm ready for it. The PAC Sports Network will have live coverage of the President's Athletic Conference Baseball Championships next week at w js Ross Memorial Park. Weather permitting, of course. Tournament is slated for Thursday, May 9th through Saturday the 11th. 
WJ, by the way, the number one seed clinched in that tournament. You can catch every pitch of the PAC baseball tournament at www.packstream.net. Kevin Zomanski, Bob Orquist. I think Gore, our producer and director. Cole's running the camera here. The presidents have switched up. I think they're going to Sherwood. And they went back to D'Amico on the Titans did on the draw control because now they're on the same side. Mason likes to go opposite. <clears throat> it has made a difference, I think, in the second half. And here comes an opportunity for D'Amico. No, oh, it hits the... I thought it hit the post and it just went wide. I thought it hit the near post. Boy, D'Amico streaking in almost uncontested on a breakaway, Kevin. Yeah, she got the draw and then just went right down the field, much like you'd see a Fogo in the men's game. They get control, they go right down the middle. She had Hayes in the right alley, but opted for the shot. Yeah, in the men's game, that's sometimes <clears throat> the Fogo's only opportunity right. to get shots on goal. <laughs> yeah, they, they get excited to streak right down the middle. Mason double-teamed, Raddick double-teamed. Now the loose ball comes down to Lee D'Amico. Tries to go to Braddock, or it's Mason who picked up the ground ball. Braddock lost it. Alexis Miller trying to gain possession, and it comes to Bria Braddock. You would think the lower shots might be more effective now with a little bit more wet turf here at uh, Burry Stadium. Whistle as Braddock tried to work in down the near side. And Bria Braddock's going to get a free position opportunity from the 12 on the near side. Wide open opportunity to step and shoot. She's got it in front of her. If she was left-handed, she'd have a great opportunity. She's got it on the right-hand side. She fakes a pass and then resets, goes down the right side and draws another foul, so she should get an eight. What a nice little move there. That was almost like the uh, lacrosse equivalent of crossing someone over. She kind of took a step, let the defender pass her, and then she went around her. <clears throat> She's going to fire this time down low with the basket. Blocking the five goal, Sam Lenfesti makes the save for the Presidents. She's made a couple big saves, even though... Yeah, they scored five, but she's made three or four saves here. She made that nice save on the... I think it was the Braddock shot, too, where she yeah. reached the cross out to the to the to her right to make a save earlier. It could be well out of hand. There's a foul. Whistled against Radinic for the Titans. No, actually. Radinic's going to get possession. It's a W&J turnover. The tally seen her... She hasn't seen much action. I noticed that yellow basket for the first time. <clears throat> Hayes was down low. Polchinski tried to cut in from the near side. She was dislodged. Was it Polchinski earlier who flipped that shot up from the yeah? I think it was. Yeah, I think it was. It was a very, a very creative, uh, almost like a field hockey shot, but you're able a, to scoop it. Thought she might have an opportunity to do that there, but she's called for a foul, so that's going to give a freebie for the president in her own zone. And now, with under 14 minutes to go, they're going to need to pick up some urgency down here five in the second half. Yeah, this one has kind of slowly got away from the presidents and they've not mounted much of an attack here in the second half. But look at this clear by Miller. She's just zigzagging back and forth. Works it to Shinsky. Shinsky dislodged another cost turnover for Braddock. Margot Mason on the counterattack through midfield. Slides left, going right. Dodges, still going right. Had the ball knocked away. Polchinski. Is going to track it down for the Titans. Mason ran about 50 yards right there until she'll, she got about 10 yards in front of the cage, and the defenders finally were able to close down her space and dislodge the ball. D'amico, Braddock, and Mason were spread out Here at, they the, go again. at the 25. At the top of the formation. With a 10-5 to 5 lead, you're going to try to maybe milk some clock off the shot clock before taking opportunities. Shot clock is down to under 50 seconds. There's an opportunity for Polchinski. Shot low. I check it. It was D'Amico. Denied again by Sam Lundfesti. Yeah, she's had a good game in, in goal for the Presidents. <clears throat> I guess you can... Oh, there's a loose one there. Turns it over to Margo Mason. I think these two schools well manned in net for the next three years as both of yeah, the keepers freshmen. here are freshmen. They're both kind of young teams. We mentioned only one senior on the Presidents and Coach uh, Valerio mentioned seven freshmen are expected to arrive on campus next year to provide some reinforcements and some more numbers, and I'm sure that makes it a little easier to practice. Only, and do, only two seniors for the Titans. Only two seniors for the Titans. 
And they got good numbers, so I guess that leads to that um, could be back here or, or down in Washington for uh, the D3 championship next year for the PAC championship rally. Flipped on the near side to D'Amico as we approach 12 minutes to go. Second half, Braddock's open. Oh, she had two players, Polchinski and Schweikert, open on the near side, so that was unselfish, but in the process of passing, Braddock was fouled. She's going to get a free position opportunity. Look at Mason stretching out the left quad after that 50-yard 50, <laughs> 50 sprint. Oh, or yeah, she's, she, she's or she's doing the new dance move. She has the uh, the left leg behind, up behind her her butt, scratching that, that quad. She's going to get the return pass, and again, that's... She was stretched you're, out and got ready for that pass. You're milking clock and protecting the lead as well with a stretch Oh, out give quad. and go. Give and go. Oh, a big save to the right. Len Festi again denies Margo Mason. So they've done it a couple times. They'll kick it back to Mason on the free position, then she kicks it to Braddock, and she cuts right to the net. She found room that time. Better save by Len Festi. She's been really good here in the second half. She struggles by five. It could be ten right. without her production between the pipes. She either has reached or with one more save will reach double digits and saves. So I think she's at 10 or maybe 9 at this point. Good stop for the freshman, Sam. Len Festi. Who coach said that really wasn't on her radar. She just kind of arrived. She was a, a, had a lot of experience in box lacrosse down in Maryland. Yeah, one of the former assistant <clears throat> coaches, Coach Valeria said. Saw her playing in an indoor league. She was not on her radar. We had that conversation with us about the freshman. It's just keeping your eyes and your ears open, right? And right. They found Len Festi, and Mati goes down with an injury. She got concussed in the <laughs> overtime loss to Westminster, and it's been Len Festi's season since then. Well, the, I mean, to me, that would be the life of a coach at this level, Division Three. You're looking for the overlooked players that with a lot of potential. Trying to dodge her way in is Clara Sherwood. Near side, she flips it over. Vitali. Tries to cut inside. She's dislodged. It's pretty good defense. Is that Keller? Or Marcus? It's Emily Marcus. And Marcus comes the other way with a transition. Good hustle by Vitali to get back and defend, but they work it up. But not a good pass. It kind of crossed Schweikert up, and Romy Schweikert is going to scoop it up and set up the possession for the Titans. Open, Braddock, near side. Goes down below the goal line. Good feed. Flips it out. Mike Mason, oh, there another nice. save for Lenfesti. Brilliant in the second half. She holds the basket to her right, and that's where she's making a lot of these saves. At some point, they're going to have to test her left side. <clears throat> no, she needs to scoop and make a save with the basket and then hockey card that like a goalie, <laughs> right? You know those goalies. Always, yeah, you they the, make the glove save and make, hold it you, up. You want to pose and get that photo. But she's uh, her. But she holds the basket to her right. And she's yeah. They shot to there. And, and she made, tracked it well. Yeah. Made the saves. Indeed, she has tracked it. I well. think that one is at least getting her in double digits. There comes Gamble now with under ten to go. It's time to be urgent for the presidents. They're working up to Shinsky, but it's on the ground, and it's Mason with the GB. To Braddock. <laughs> here comes the attack. Up ahead, Schweiker, three on two, opposite side Good open. Pulchinski. Save Len Festi. It could very well be 18 to 5. Oh, the play for sure. Len Festi's been terrific in the second half despite the Westminster Titans scoring five. Good transition there, spotting the open man in the right alley. Now they're going to slow it down a little bit. Yeah, well played on the three on two counterattack. I think Braddock right there, she's, she's got open. it. She looked a little tired for a moment, but they still gave it to her. I'm pretty sure with a hat trick and the way she's played all around, she's. She's earned a rest. Yeah, I was thinking, I don't know what you think. She's probably the fastest player out there today. Or we've seen the most speed. One of them, sure. And they are on the ride. Oh, good pick. That's, a, that's definitely a moving pick on Alexis Miller. And she obliterated Margot Mason. Mason shrugs it off. Need your teammates to help call out those picks. You think it might have been a little frustration for Alexis Miller? She... <laughs> She established position there and delivered that one and got the, the whistle. So possession back to the Titans. And again, they have 90 seconds on the shot clock, so they can eat up some of this clock as we can, we're going to tick under eight minutes to go. They lead 10-5 to 5, trying to win their, their first ever and the first ever President's Athletic Conference Women's uh, Lacrosse Championship. Braddock on the dodge and another one. Good job on the secondary defense 
by Caitlin White to create the turnover. And here come the Presidents. You know, who's been a little quiet in the second half? That intended pass receiver right there is La Rochelle. Does come to Piper Shinsky. Shinsky on the near side. Has it dislodged. On a good defense by Radinic. And she comes away with a turnover. <laughs> Radinic is going to bounce it forward to Schweiker. She's into the attack zone. Another possession for the Titans. Radnick is in some discomfort right in front of us on the 45. Is she got hit on that run or she's got a, 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 like a side cramp her from running? Yeah, she's in big time discomfort. She's on. She's a defender too, so you've got to be worried on the turnover if you're the Titans. But Mason tracks it down, finds D'Amico. Yeah, Radinick is... She might definitely need to sub out. We get a whistle. D'Amico is also showing some discomfort. Well, she ran about 35 yards with a turnover. Yeah. I think about running three <laughs> yards, and I, I get one of those. Pull up with a hammy. 44 seconds on the shot clock here. Three position <clears throat> opportunity. Do you take it or do you pull it out? Braddock's kind of got inside position here on the left wing down near the near post. And they got two behind in that, including Hayes and Schweikert. Going to walk oh. in, another save by Lefesti, and she stops the rebound as well. Two opportunities for Margot Mason. Two more saves for Sam Lefesti. Actually, that was D'Amico with the double opportunity. But it's Ooh. Titan possession, which is probably the most important thing as we're under six and a half to go. Campbell kind of turned and almost decapitated Paul Chinsky. Going right, firing D'Amico. Did it go in? It did. D'Amico gets her sixth of the game. It's 11 five Titans. Well, it was a turnover out there, and uh, Paul Chinsky was able to get the, get the ball, and they get it over to D'Amico, and she picks up her. 50th goal of the season. See, didn't and I mention 50 earlier? You mentioned earlier. Now so she stay has... tuned. I'm going to give you tonight's lottery numbers. <laughs> 50 now for D'Amico. Six in the championship game. Westminster goal by number nine, Emily D'Amico. Her sixth of the day. This one has uh, most definitely... Got away from the presidents here in the second half as Westminster has poured on six goals, six unanswered goals in the second half. With That's eight unanswered all told. Too. Right. They Last the two of the two. first half. Yep. Good point. So the Titans at one point trailed 5-3. to three. They have an 11-5 to five lead, and they're 6-13 away from their first ever Women's Lacrosse Championship. And they have the draw control with Margot Mason to Bria Braddock. Braddock dumps it down low, but she turns it over. Braddock was knocked down, and that was actually kind of an easy steal for Caleb. Or not Bullis. It was Onslow. And we get a card against Carly Hopkins. I don't think the contact was that bad. but <laughs> It's going to be a little bit of uh, quite a number of ice bags required after this one. Braddock pulls it out. I don't want to keep referencing hockey, but I saw a great quote before the Oilers. We talked about Wayne Gretzky mm -hmm. earlier. Won their four straight championships. They said they walked past the Islanders dressing room and there were ice packs on ankles and knees and shoulders and thought, that's how you win cups. That's how you win championships. Right. So the ice bags will be worth it if Westminster holds on or if WJ mounts the great comeback, although they trail by six with under six to go. Yeah, that would be something to see here if they were the mount of. You need uh, <clears throat> more than a goal per minute here. West Mitzler again has gone into that slowdown with the 90-second shot clock. It's Mason on the NCAA logo. Logo, Division Three, getting open. Scoring! <laughs> Megan Polchinski! Another one for the Titans. And a 12-5 lead for West Mitzler College. Well, it was a good spot there. I think it was uh, 
Mason on the assist. Should be, should be. Polchinski right in the house area. And she turned and fired and did, made no mistake there to finish. Mason has a goal and three assists in the second half for Polchinski, her 21st goal of the season. We'll step aside, 520 to go in the PAC Women's Lacrosse Championship. It's Westminster 12 and WNJ 5. You're watching it right here on the PAC Sports Network. <laughs> when you step through that door or shake their hands, will you be prepared? When you stand up for a client or walk into that meeting, Will you be ready, ready to prove to them that you deserve to be there? When you come to Washington and Jefferson, you will be. Washington and Jefferson College, are you ready? With two locations in Washington County, at the McMurray Shops in Peters Township and Trinity Point in Washington. Fans, if you want to purchase your own digital download of today's game, email the PAC Sports Network at info at packstream.net. And a digital download of today's broadcast is yours for just $25. <laughs> Maybe the D'Amico family might want a copy of this hmm. one. Six goals in a championship match? Yeah, that might be a keepsake for later That's a good story on. to tell your kids and your grandkids. <clears throat> for sure. Heck, that's a good story to go home and tell your neighbors tonight. <laughs> so with 5.20 to go, a face-off at midfield with the Titans up 12-5. to They've got all seven goals in the second half and nine straight in this match. At the very least, D'Amico shouldn't have to buy the first round tonight if she makes it to a watering hole. She should not have to buy any rounds, <laughs> no matter what her beverage of choice is. <clears throat> so unless something changes, it'll be five straight appearances for the presidents in the championship game, including Three of those, or four straight, three of those in the ORLC. There's an attack down low. How about in tight Cipriani? She got that bouncing ball just in one motion. Fired it high and hard wide of the near post. Yeah, she's not real tall, but she got that basket up high and got that uh, loose ball and was able to try to fire. The first two appearances from <clears throat> Coach Valerio and the Presidents, they were champions in the ORLC, but unless something changes dramatically, they're going to be runners-up for the second straight year. And eventually, you look at those bronze medals, I guess, and it's not going to be any, you're not going to be feeling that anything tonight. Oh. They roll it in, it rolled through, and there is Cipriani, the freshman, to nudge it into the goal. 13-5 Titans. You know, just to continue the metaphor we had, that was like someone coming out of the corner in hockey and going to the net for the tip, but that time she kind of swiped it home with the loose ground ball rolling towards the cage of Len Fesky, who has been brilliant in the second half, and Cipriani just kind of swept it home. Look at Len Fesky getting consoled by Caitlin White. Cipriani scores, Kevin, and she's a freshman. Three goals now the season, one of them in the title game. So that's another story that goes into the books for Katie Cipriani. Just nudge it in. I was going back to that Len Fesky comment, Kevin. She was kind of moving out to get the ball, but Cipriani got there first, and that kind of left room for Cipriani to, to slide it in, which she did. She she read the play, did a nice job arriving at the right time, reached down and just swept it home. <clears throat> Ten straight been an impressive second half here all for the eight, Titans. All eight goals in the second half for the Navy and White. Yeah, you don't often, very infrequently, see a shutout in the half. The president's just not able to get on the board yet in the second half, and they're running out of time. 
as we approach three and a half minutes remaining in this championship match. Very rarely can I remember in the second 30, Kevin, any kind of really sustained pressure. To no, we've right. been looking to our left the whole time. Uh, there's been forays up there, but nothing sustained. Good dodge. Oh, the dodge! Who else? D'Amico with number seven. And I don't know if that is her uh, celebration that she's done, but she kind of threw her cross on the ground. They, they do that because the refs, oh. I like it as a celebration too, but they, they throw it down and then the refs look at the basket. Westminster goal by number nine, Emily D'Amico. Her seventh of the game unassisted. And this one coming at 26-39. Seven goals for D'Amico. She's outscored the entire president's team. Hmm. It was just a good dodge by D'Amico. Picks up her 51st. A lot of space there in the right alley. She just found it <clears throat> and finished it. You know, when you're having a great game, when we grew up playing sports, they would say, hey, you know, have a day, Kevin. Have yeah, a day. have a day. How about a night? For Emily D'Amico, she has certainly had that. <clears throat> Seven goals in the championship match. Let's go! Braddock, Mason. Mason is going to reset. That could have been a card on Sherwood, but it wasn't a blowout. There's another goal! Go ahead, Kevin. Pick it. It's D'Amico again. She's not stopped as the clock continues to run here. That one she was might not be human. <laughs> that one's right around 27 mark of the second half. Emily D'Amico, her eighth of this game. 52nd of the season. As D'Amico is just going crazy here in this, this match. Well, she's making the Tigers back at home in Moon Township happy. Her <clears throat> former teammates. D'Amico was second team OORLC last year. 102 goals. She had a team record with 51 goals last year. She had 102 career goals heading into this match. Did Emily D'Amico. So well above that. She got eight in this contest. The president's going to try to reintroduce themselves to Emmy, Emma Bradley to our right here. She's been kind of lonely along with her three defenders for a while as we spent most of the time on the half of the presidents. They work it down low. Miller tried to make a move from left to right with the basket. The ball was dislodged. Here come the Titans. They're a minute 45 away from a title. Ball played to the far side. They're into the attack zone. With 90 seconds to go, things are about to get loud and rowdy in New Mil Wilmington. Well, as rowdy as they can get. As, as rowdy as they, they can, can get. get. Up here. And they're just playing perimeter catch now. Milking the 10 goal lead. Mason, who had a great second half, gets it to Braddock, who had a great game for the Titans. Polchinski, who has a goal. There's Hayes beyond the net. Under a minute. There's a step out for Hayes. You know, in and out of the basket of Braddock. Serenade from the crowd. Braddock in front. Turning <clears throat> shot missing way wide was Kipriani. Braddock took a shot. Not only, she took it to the face. There she is. Coach <laughs> Elder saw this. She will be rotating that shoulder, and she was. I can't believe Cipriani missed the entire net from that close. 14 seconds still on the shot clock. 30 on the game clock. Centering pass is intercepted. Here come the presidents. Can they take it off the goose egg here in the second half? Onslow with the uh, good interception there as a senior yeah, nice playing her last game. Yep. <clears throat> That's a great point. Ball on the near side. Carly Hopkin tries to save it. She can't. Count it down, fans. The celebration is on with Emma Bradley as the Titans 
are the first ever PAC Women's Lacrosse Champions. Cue up the queen. DJ Callen, same deal. <laughs> queen is what you're going to, we'll probably hear that. Third year, Kevin, in existence. Yeah, that's impressive. 14 that's wins. Amazing. And a PAC <laughs> Women's Lacrosse Championship for Kim Eldridge and the Westminster College Titans. Yeah, really amazing achievement in your third year. Uh, you know, in our conversation with Coach Eldridge, I mean, she mentioned, specifically mentioned running. And I think we saw that in the second half. They just outran the presidents and wore them out the presidents didn't seem to have any answer for the attack of the titans in the second half and then once they started extended that lead you just did not see the punch back at all the presidents appeared to be tired the deeper more fit uh titans really just uh, were overwhelming in the second half 10 goals to none is really this, all you need to know statistically. They the outscored. other thing is, at one point it was 5 3, yeah. W and J, and ends up And then the timeout was taken. Westbrook, great timeout for Coach Alfred. After that timeout, she's out, she outscored the Presidents. The Titans outscored the Presidents 12 to 0 after that timeout. Wouldn't you like to know what she said at that timeout? <laughs> well, hopefully, we can run into her and ask her afterwards. But whatever she said and whatever kind of adjustments, which there were some, freed up Mason in the second half. They didn't need to free up Emily D'Amico. She was great the entire game. And again, 12 unanswered for West Miffs or to win the championship With, here without this evening. Without knowing exactly, one thing we could pick up on the attack is they, they switched it from an inverted attack with Hayes on the X to out front and put the ball in the hands of probably the three best players. Emily D'Amico scored eight, Margo Mason and uh, Bria Braddock. And that really changed everything when they started to attack uh, out high as opposed to from behind the cage. And uh, maybe that was just all it took, that subtle adjustment to uh, trigger a 12-goal onslaught, I think was the word I was searching for earlier. Westminster wins the inaugural President's Athletic Conference Women's Lacrosse Championship here at home by a score of 15-5. to We're going to take a break and be back to recap. We'll get you some final stats and some more of the celebration from Burry Stadium. As you're watching PA, PAC Women's Lacrosse right here on the PAC Sports Network. Time to claim your spot. With two locations in Washington County at the McMurray Shops in Peters Township and Trinity Point in Washington. The biggest thing with Consolidated is their customer service. They treat you like a preferred client, even if you're just starting with them. They've truly taken the time to understand who we are as a business and recommend the best product and services based upon that knowledge of who we are. Being able to rely on a technology partner like CCI to provide the fiber backbone means that our internet signal is completely reliable. I can't recommend any other parties. Consolidate is my first choice. When you're seriously in debt, you know that feeling. It returns every time the phone rings. Things are out of control. A job you were counting on didn't come through or you got sick. No matter how it got to this point, your creditors don't care or understand, but I do. It's not too late. I can help. If you're embarrassed, overwhelmed or frustrated, don't be. I'm not here to judge, I'm here to help, and you do need help. Please call me, there is a way out, and I'll get you there. When you are in need of fast, affordable, and professional voiceovers, contact Time Ad Productions. Time Ad Productions offers voice services for business presentations, documentary narrations, radio, television, imaging, and commercials, movie trailers, corporate phone systems, websites, audiobooks, and more. Visit or contact us online at www.timeadproductions.com. Well, we talked about celebrating a championship in New Wilmington. How do you do it? You apparently take a dip 
into Lake Britain because that's where the Titans are headed right now to the far end of the stadium to celebrate the PAC Women's Lacrosse Championship. That um, can't be warm right now. No. <laughs> Certainly can't. But they started sprinting down the far side, and I wondered where they were going. And Cole was uh, right on top of it. Our student camera person said, I hope they're going to the lake. And they're headed to the lake. They're taking a dip in Lake Britain to celebrate the championship, and that is a great tradition. I think that it started here and should stay here, regardless of where the new facility is. I mentioned that before we get to the scoring recap <coughs> and the final statistics. Westminster College and UPMC announced a 10-year sponsorship, and the soccer and the cross players will have a dedicated field next fall. Nice of the sponsorship. It will be the UPMC Sports Complex. Construction expected to begin this summer. There will be a synthetic turf field with lights. It will be located adjacent to the Memorial Fieldhouse here on campus. There will be bleachers, a press box, which will come later on. It will include uh, West End existing tennis courts, which are there for those who are on campus here. It will not only benefit soccer and lacrosse and tennis student athletes, it will be also used by other groups such as the marching band, intramural sports, and summer camp goers. So that's a great uh, venture between UPMC and Westminster College. And Kevin, great stuff here <coughs> this evening for the Westminster College, College Titans to win uh, the first ever lacrosse championship <coughs> in the PAC and the first ever women's lacrosse championship for this college. Yeah, some interesting game stats that we'll get to, but we're going to quickly get on the scoring recap just the uh, second half. Oh, we got all the goals right here on the back page. Okay. So in the first half, we were 5-5 five, five at halftime, and uh, Emily D'Amico had four of the five Westminster goals. The other one went to Michaela. Well, hey, keep that pattern in memory. Right. That didn't change. But in the second half, uh, we're going to go. It was at the 6-5. to five. They got the lead, never relinquished it. Uh, at the 740 mark, it was uh, Bria Braddock, her 59th of the season well, the from Margo Bears, Mason. For the <laughs> They're calling them back. They've, they're being admonished for jumping into Lake Britain. At the 88-team mark, it was Margo Mason, her 86th of the season. <clears throat> Make it 7-5. The lead extended at the 921 mark. Bria Braddock picked up her 60th of the season. Assist to Margo Mason. And at the 1303 mark, it was Emily D'Amico, her 49th and 5th of the match. Made it 9-5, to five, and the onslaught continued 10-5 to five at the 1349 mark. I'm sorry, that wasn't correct. Uh, we'll get to that. It was Bria Braddock, her 61st of the season. That was at the, yeah, that was right, 1359, sorry. <clears throat> and then at the 2347 mark, Emily D'Amico, her sixth of the match and 50th goal of the season. Unassisted, 12-5 at 2440. Megan Polchinski, her 21st from Margo Mason. 13-5 at the 2543 mark, Katie Cipriani with the uh, swipe on the ground ball. And then 14-5, 2639, Emily D'Amico, her 51st, seventh of the match. And D'Amico picked up her eighth and final of the match at the 27-minute mark, uh, 57th of the season, or 52nd of the season to end the scoring. Ten goals in the second half, none for the Presidents, a shutout, 15-5. to five. And looking at the game stats, specifically looked at the saves. How about that, 15? Um, for Lenfeski, she had ten saves in the second half. Bradley had zero saves in the second half because there were zero shots on goal. How about that? I was just going to make mention of that. The stat that jumped out, 71 goals, finishing the great junior season for Ray LaRochelle. She had four shots, three on goal in the first half. She ends up with that total. So a complete shutdown of the entire president's offense in the second half by the Titans. Great defensive adjustments by Coach Eldridge. <clears throat> Changed the uh, player that took the draws, so different look on draw control. And we think uh, different look on the point of attack. They went from... Uh, kind of behind the net on the X with Hayes being a good feeder to uh, point of attack out high where Mason and D'Amico and Braddock were able to use their speed and elusiveness to dodge and create opportunities not only for themselves but for their teammates. Bria Braddock gets the hat trick, adds an <coughs> assist, also nine cost turnovers and a game high six ground balls for Bria Braddock. Margo Mason, who was kind of shut down in the first half, a goal and three assists, 
to finish her great first season here at Westminster College with 86 goals and 27 assists. She was money in the second half. You cannot overlook Emily D'Amico. Eight goals, 13 shots, 12 of them on goal. She also had four draw controls and two cause turnovers, two ground balls. What a great performance for Emily D'Amico for the Titans. Michaela Hayes, who was great below the goal line from the exit goal and two assists as well. And Megan Polchinski, the freshman from Norman, Norwin, a goal and an assist for two points for the Westminster Titans. Tremendous second half all around. And some great stat, individual stat lines that you just uh, mentioned right there as they're at midfield collecting the trophy. And they'll advance to the D3 championships where the uh, pairings will be re uh, released tomorrow. I think it's an all-day affair because the, the men's D1 pairing show is at 9 p.m. So they must be going all through them all day. It will be 9.30 for that opportunity. Uh, to find out for the NCAA Division III Women's Lacrosse Championship. So tomorrow at 9.30, the online selection show is available at NCAA.com. First and second round matchups for the Women's Lacrosse tour Tournament are scheduled for Friday and Sunday, May 12th, May 10th through the 12th. So good stop for the Westminster College Titans. Their third season, this was the first season of sanctioned PAC Women's Lacrosse, and they are the inaugural champions is there a singing you, queen you want queen i requested your, it and they your, delivered your request has been granted by the westminster college titans i want to let you know if you're interested in purchasing your own digital copy of this match tonight's match it's very easy email the pac sports network at info at packstream.net and a digital download of today's broadcast will be sent to you for just 25 dollars so all in all, not a bad Saturday for Westminster College. The boys finish as the runner up, runners up, Kevin. Yes. In the men's lacrosse tournament, the women are the first ever champions. Yeah, good spring season of lacrosse up here in New Wilmington. Uh, <clears throat> second place medal and a championship medal for the women. Our 2019 PAC champion, Westminster. So that is it from Burry Stadium at Westminster College. They win an automatic bid into the NCAA Division III championship. They scored 10 straight goals in this game, all 10 in the second half, right. 12 straight, 10 in the second half to win 15 to 5. And a tidbit that our producer, Randy, gave us at intermission, because seven core members were part of the conference, they're getting the automatic berth into the NCAA tournament, even though it's the first year of the conference sponsoring this sport. So Westminster is going to benefit from that in the advance next weekend. A couple thank yous going out. Core producer. We're going to get off the air. We're going to throw him in Lake Britain to celebrate this uh, championship. On the camera. Uh, our producer and our director, Randy Gore, for my partner, Kevin Zomansky. Thanks to Kim Eldridge for her help as she's getting celebrated right now. Thanks to Allison Valerio as well from W&J for her, her help. Most of all, thanks to everyone at home for watching the coverage of the PAC Women's Lacrosse Championship here on the PA Sports Network. One final time from Burry Stadium. Your final score, Westminster College 15. W&J5, Bob Work was saying good night and College, thanks for watching live coverage of the President's Athletic Conference Women's Lacrosse Championship. You saw it right here on the PAC Sports Network.